Shalom Israel, most incredible bless you all. Oh, praise the Lord, oh, praise the Lord. Shalom brothers and sisters online, take notes, take notes. Another edition of the Sabbath day. This is the Sabbath evening class, all right? We're going to go over scriptures, take notes, take out your pens and papers and take notes, okay? This class is going to be long, this class is going to be hard. I need you men and women to pay attention, okay? Together, the 12 tribes of Israel, all right? Let's open up with the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Let's start there. Okay, come on. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is Christ speaking, the black Messiah, our king, our leader. He says what? Read that again. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. Come on. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. What we have not understand is that we don't know what the truth is. As a nation, we've been in captivity. We've been destroyed for so long through apartheid, colonization, forced migration. You understand? Racism, being oppressed and depressed. We have forgotten what the truth of the Most High God is. That's why we don't know who we are no more. Okay, give me that in Psalms. 119 verse 142. Let's understand what the truth is according to the Most High God, according to the Holy Bible. Okay, Psalms 119 verse 142. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Go ahead. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Read. And thy law is the truth. What is the truth? And thy law is the truth. The truth is God's laws. That's what the truth is. The truth is God's commandments. Read now 151. Psalms 119, verse 151. Watch this. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 151. Read. Thou art near, O Lord. The Lord, the Most High God is near unto us. Read. And all thy commandments are truth. And all thy commandments are what? And all thy commandments are truth. The only truth upon this earth is God's commandments. All God's commandments are the truth. You understand? The only way you're going to find the truth is in the laws of God. Go back to John 8.32. We need to understand this Israel. Because we've been going to church. They've been lied to us. The pastors don't know what this Bible is saying. The pastor is winging it. The pastor is teaching you white supremacy, which is Christianity. Christianity is not found anywhere in the Holy Bible. Read what you got. John 8, 32. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. And we shall know the laws of God. Read. And the truth shall make you free. And the laws of God is how we're going to be delivered from captivity. First must be a spiritual deliverance. And then a physical deliverance when the Lord returns. But right now, the Most High God is using the, 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 the His Son, you understand, for when, when He died for us, and He raising up the apostles in the last days, the prophets in the last days, to teach us who we are and what we must do to come out of the conditions we're in. Get that in Isaiah 62, verse 10. Start with 7, actually. Okay. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 10. Watch this. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse 10. Hold on, let me get it. Let me get it. Okay, read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse 10. Read. Go through. Go through the gates. Go through the gates. The gates is where our people is at. You understand? Read. Prepare ye the way of the people. We must prepare the way for the people. The way we prepare the way for the people is not through politics. It's not through Christianity. It's not through democracy. But it's through the laws of God. Because that's what our people need. Read. Cast up. Cast up the highway. Gather out the stones. Mm. Lift up a standard for the people. The Lord said we must what? Lift up a standard for the people. The standard is the Bible. The standard of living is the Holy Bible. How we as a nation, we must live in these last days. How we must conduct ourselves. How we must return back to the most High God. Jump up to verse 7. Watch this. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. You, you know what? Start of verse 6. Read verse 6. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse 6. Watch this. Go ahead. I have set watchmen upon thy walls. We are the watchmen. That's what you need to understand, men and women, especially you brothers. You men, you need to understand your job. Your job is not to be a rapper. Your job is not to be a soccer player. Your job is not to be a celebrity. Your job is to be a prophet of the Most High God. That's your job. The nations are not going to wake you up. The nations are not going to deliver your people from slavery. Your nations, the nations are okay with you being a slave. Because that's how they get to be on top. That's how they, be, they get to rule over you, black men. So the black men, I need you men, and you men to understand this thing. That's your job. Your job is not to be chasing after some booty. Mm -mm. Your job is to be a prophet of the Lord. 
to wake up your people that are in captivity. That's the greatest honor. You understand? Read it again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse 6. Read. I have set up watchmen upon thy wall. The watchman is the man. Read. O Jerusalem. Go ahead. Which shall never hold their peace. The Lord says, we, we, the true prophets of the Lord, we're not going to hold our peace. We're going to go to the street corners. We're going to have classes in the classroom. And we're going to be in the street corners waking the people up. Read. Day nor night. Day nor night. Come on. Ye that make mention of the Lord. Those that make mention of the Lord is the prophets on the street corners. Come on. Keep not silent. He said what? Keep not silent. The Lord says we must not keep silent. Read. Give him no rest. We must not give the Lord rest. Come on. Till he establish. Until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Because right now Jerusalem is not a praise in the earth. We are we are called niggas. We call duckies. We have been called Abu Dagi. That's what we've been reduced to in these last days. We're nothing to these nations. But we are what? We are special unto the most high God of heaven and earth. That's why he says what? Read that part again. The book of Isaiah chapter 62 verse 7. Read. And give him no rest till he establish. Until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. You see that thing? He says the only way, the only time when the most high God of heaven and earth is going to make Jerusalem a praise in the earth is when we do what we're supposed to. When we fulfill the prophecies that are written, that the black man must put his boots on, go to the streets, and wake up his nation. You understand? That's the job. Give me that in Amos chapter 3. Okay, verse 7. Amos 3, verse 7. Watch this. The prophecies in this Bible, they, they must come true. But the only way they're going to come true is, this, is the black man must put his boots on and be men. Go to the seat corners and wake up Israel. That's the job. Okay? Read what you got. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 7. Start at verse 6. Watch this. Verse 6. Uh -huh. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city? Read. And the people not be afraid? The trumpet is the Bible. The trumpet is the Bible. That means we must teach the prophecies that are written in this book. Whether they are painful to hear or not, we must push them out because it's necessary for the deliverance of our people from slavery. Go ahead. Shall there be evil in a city mm -hmm. and the Lord has not done it? The evil that you see in the cities all over the world, the most High God is doing it for the preparation for the second coming of his son. Read. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. The most High God is, gonna, is not going to do anything. Come on. But he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. You see that thing? That means the most High God says, I'm not going to make Jerusalem a praise and name in the earth until the prophets take my word and go out there and teach the people the word of God. That's the only time when the Lord will make the prophecies of this Bible come true. Because he reveals that these secrets unto the prophets. What is the job of the prophets? Give me that in Luke 14, 23. This is the job of the black man. You understand? The prophets of the Most High God. Because you are a prophet, black man. You just don't know it. You have not been taught that. You go to the Christian church, they tell you God loves everyone. That's not in the Bible. You understand? Your savior, your oppressor, your oppressor cannot be your savior at the same time. That doesn't make any sense. But Christianity has brainwashed the black man and the black woman to believe that thing. Read what you got. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. Watch this. This is the job of the prophets. Come on. And the Lord said unto the servants. We are the servants of the Lord. Read. Go out into the highways and hedges. Go to the street corners. Come on. And compel them to come and in. And compel the house of Israel to come in. Read. That my house may be filled. What is the house he's talking about? Hold that. Give me that in Matthew 15, 24. Let's see who is this. There's the house that he's making reference to. What is he making reference to? Who is he referring to? Is it everybody? Is it the house of Moab? Is it the house of Edom? Is it the house of um, Ammon? Is it the house of Ishmael? Let's see the house that must come in. Go ahead. The book of Matthew chapter 15 verse 24. Read. But he answered and said, mm -hmm. I am not sent. This is Christ speaking out of the mouth of the Messiah. What did he say? I am not sent, uh -huh. but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He says, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Not the house of Moab. Mm -mm. Christ was only sent to the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 sons of Jacob. You understand? If you don't understand, go back to where he was at now. Luke 14, 23. Okay? The waking up of the 12 tribes of Israel, we go out to wake up our people. Because our people is the one that are lost. The nations are not lost. The Chinese, they know who they are. The Japanese know who they are. 
The Arabs know who they are. The Hamites, they know who they are. White people know who they are. The only people who don't know who they are is the house of Israel. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians because we make up the 12 tribes of Israel. Read that. Luke 14, 23. The book of Luke chapter 14, verse 23. I'm showing you what the truth. This is the truth that will make you free black men. Read. And the Lord said unto the servants. Go ahead. Go out into the highways and hedges mm. and compel them to come in. That them is the house of Israel. Read. That my house may be filled. That the house of Israel may be filled. With what? With, with spirits that believe this truth. You understand that? That's what the Lord is saying right there. Go back to John 8.32. We need to understand the purpose of our Lord and Savior because he was only sent to the Lordship of the house of Israel. He wasn't sent to everybody, okay? I'm going to give you the title of the class. I know it's on YouTube already, but guess what? I'm going to announce it also, okay? Read that. John 8, 32. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Go ahead. And ye shall know the truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. The laws of God is how we're going to get delivered, black men. Understand that thing. And what we the first deliverance is, is our minds because our minds is been what our minds is spoiled with the philosophies that this ruling nation is 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 taught us in these last days. You understand? Give me that in Jeremiah fifty one verse six. Okay, this is the first deliverance that we must have. The first deliverance is our mind. That's why Christ said, "You must be born again. You must learn who you are. You must be taught afresh." Read that Jeremiah fifty one verse six. This is the first deliverance is making reference to here. Read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 6. Read. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. He says, flee out of the midst of Babylon. The Babylon here is not talking about the Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar. This Babylon here is Babylon the Great, the United States of America. Read again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 6. Go ahead. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. He says, flee out of the midst of Babylon. This Babylon here is Babylon the Great, the United States of America, and all over the world because they conquer and ruled over the whole planet Earth. And they've enslaved the sons and daughters of Jacob. Read. And deliver every man his soul. Deliver every man his what? And deliver every man his soul. His soul, his mind, his spirit. The first deliverance is your spirit. That's why Christ says you must be born again. Read. Be not cut off in an iniquity. He says don't be caught up in America's sins. Because America is pushing homosexuality all over the world. They are pushing homosexuality in Uganda now. You understand? And they are pushing homosexuality where? In the Congo. They are pushing homosexuality where? In Nigeria. And those countries, they don't agree with that. You understand? They are pushing homosexuality in Haiti. That's why those countries are poor like the way that they are. Why? Because America's policies are not acceptable over there. That's why America now is starving the people to cause a what? A civil unrest. The reason why you see the civil unrest in many countries is because of America's hands in it. Because America wants to push their policies over there. You understand? For the people to have the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is not a microchip. It's sin. As an example, homosexuality, democracy, feminism. You understand? That's what they are pushing. Okay? Read that part again. And be not what? Be not cut off in her iniquity. Don't be cut off in America's sins. And wherever the white man is, whether it's the EU or America, because they are all over the earth. Read. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. It's the time of the Lord's vengeance. Because the Lord is going to bring vengeance upon America and upon the EU. And in the lands where they are ruling, the Lord is going to bring vengeance upon them. Go ahead. He will render unto her a recompense. Uh-huh. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Now, give me Revelation 18, verse 1. We're going to read to verse 4. Watch this. The same thing that Jeremiah is saying here is the same thing that John the Revelator is saying in the book of Revelation. Revelation 18, verse 1. Watch this. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 1. Read. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, mm -hmm. having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Watch this. Read. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great. Babylon the what? Babylon the great. The, ba the same Babylon that Jeremiah is talking about is the same Babylon that John the Revelator is talking about here. This is the United States of America. Go ahead. Babylon the great is fallen. Mm -hmm. Is fallen. Because believe it or not, America is going to fall. And America is going to bend to the ground. Understand that when the Lord returns. Read. And it's become the habitation of devils. Read. 
and the hold of every foul spirit, mm -hmm. and a cage of every unclean and hateful bed. Read. For all nations have drank of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Because all nations are drunk with America's fornication. America pushes homosexuality all over. America is feeding the nation by robbing us. The reason why the nations are rich is because they robbed us. They are still robbing us right now. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth. The kings of the earth is talking about the leaders of the other nations. Saudi Arabia. You understand? China. India. Okay. Uh, Russia. So on and so forth. Read Britain. Germany. The Netherlands. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with them. You see that thing? They are partakers of America's sins. Read and the merchants of the earth. The merchants of the earth is talking about big business. Europe is a big business. It's a big corporation. China is a big corporation. Saudi Arabia is a big corporation. These are merchants of the earth. Read. Are waste rich mm -hmm. through the abundance of their delicacies. You see that thing? Because where does America get its riches from? By robbing us. Go ahead. And I heard another voice from heaven say, mm -hmm. come out of here. My people. You see that? It has come out of America. My people. And remember, America has a powerful influence throughout the earth. So wherever, wherever we are scattered, America is there. You understand? Their claws are over there. They've got a very powerful influence over all nations on earth. Particularly over the dark nations, which is us. Right? That ye be not partakers of their sin. It has come out of here, my people. Hold that. Give me Matthew 2 verse 6. Because when it says my people... We, who are God's people? Let's understand who God's people are. Okay? Remember, Christ says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We are giving you the truth right now, as it is written. Go ahead. The book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 6. Watch this. And thou, Bethlehem, mm -hmm. in the land of Judah, Ray. art not the least among the princes of Judah. Come on. For out of thee shall come a government mm. that shall rule my people Israel. That shall what? That shall rule my people Israel. That shall rule my people Israel. So God's people is the Israelites. You understand? From the time of the Old Testament, Genesis and all that, even unto the New Testament, God's people has always been the 12 tribes of Israel. Don't be fooled. There's no such thing as a spiritual Israel in the Bible. Like the Jehovah's Witnesses are teaching. Jehovah's Witnesses, they teach that there's a spiritual Israel. There is no spiritual Israel in the Holy Bible. They've made that thing up. You'll never find a scripture that says spiritual Israel. Spiritual Israel is just another, is just another tactic to say all nations can be saved. All nations cannot be saved. Understand that? Because all nations are not in captivity. All nations are not in slavery. All nations are not oppressed and depressed and trodden underfoot by the rest of the nations. The black man is always is at the bottom of all nations right now. You understand? From the time, from the 1600s until this day, we've been in the bottom. From the 1400s even. You understand? So the only nations that are going to get delivered is the 12 tribes of Israel. Understand that? Okay, go back to Revelation 18. Read verse 4 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 4. Watch this. Go ahead. And I heard another voice from heaven say, mm. Come out of here, my people. Come out of here, you Israelites. Read. That ye be not partakers of a sin. That's the same thing that Jeremiah says. Read. And that ye receive not of a plague. Don't receive America's judgment. Go ahead. Is that, is that it on that? Go back to John 8, 32 now. Go back right there. So Christ is telling us that we shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We're going over the truth right now, black man, black woman. Pay attention. This is for you. This is the good news. This is the gospel. Read that. John 8, 32. Come on. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth. Come on. And the truth shall make you free. The truth will make you free, black man and black woman. Israelite man and Israelite woman. Now watch this. I'm going to go into the truth also some more. Your identity matters, black man. Don't let nobody tell you, no, it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter because they're going to they're gonna de deceive you with a scripture that says there's neither Jew nor Greek. Get that in Galatians 3.28. Because this is the scripture that the Christian pastors go to to justify that all nations can be saved. That's a lie. I'm going to prove that thing. Or they are telling you lies. Read it. Because reading is fundamental, but comprehension is key. Read that. 
the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 28. Watch this. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Because this is where they'll take you. When you say no, but color matters, co listen, color, your color matters, your nationality matters. You understand? There's more than about 18 nations in the Bible. Which one are you? We come from the tribe of Judah. We are the Israel from the tribe of Judah in the diaspora. Understand that? Okay, go ahead. There is neither what? There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Go ahead. There is neither bond nor free. Read. There is neither male nor female. Read. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. You see that part right there? We, for ye are all one. That part right there, that's where they deceive you on. Jump up to verse 23. Let's see who he's talking about when he says there is neither Jew nor Greek. Because the first thing you need to understand, who are the Galatians? You understand? Because the problem is we don't know who our people in the Christian church, they don't know who the Galatians are. Jump up to verse 23. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 23. Watch this. But before faith came. But before faith came. But before faith came, meaning before Christ came. Read. We were kept under the law. We were kept under the law. We were kept under the law. Read. Shut up unto the faith. So the question is, who is the we that was kept under the law before Christ came? That's the question you must ask yourself. Who is the we that was kept under the law before Christ came? Give me that in Psalm 50 verse 5. Let's see who is the we that was kept under the law. Read that. Psalms chapter 50 verse 5. Watch this. The book of Psalms chapter 50 verse 5. Read. Gather my saints together. It says gather my saints together. Come on. Unto me. Mm -hmm. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So the law that the apostle Paul is referencing here is the law of animal sacrifice. Who was kept under the law of animal sacrifice? The saints. Give me Psalms 148 verse 14. Let's see who the saints are. It says before Christ came, we were kept under the law. What law? The law of animal sacrifice. So who are the saints that was kept under the law of animal sacrifice? Let's get the answer who the saints are. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 148, verse 14. Read. He also exalted the horn of his people. The horn of his people. Come on. The praise of all his saints. The praise of all his saints. Read. Even of the children of Israel. He's telling you who the saints are. The saints are the children of Israel. Go ahead. A people near unto him. We are a people near unto God. Read. Praise ye the Lord. He says, you better praise the Lord for that thing. Because he only chose us. So go back to Galatians now. 3 verse 23. Now we have a better understanding who is the we that was kept under the law. Not all nations were kept under the law of animal sacrifice. Not all nations were given the law of animal sacrifice. The law of animal sacrifice, who is the subject in Galatians 3, was only given to the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 23. Read. But before faith came, mm -hmm. we were kept under the law. We were kept under the law of animal sacrifice. Read. Shut up unto, unto the faith. We were shut up unto the faith because Christ was not yet revealed unto us. Read. Which should afterwards be revealed. We should afterwards be revealed. Okay, go ahead. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. That, you see that? Therefore, the law was our schoolmaster. Which law is this? The law of animal sacrifice. That was our schoolmaster. Okay, go ahead. To bring us unto Christ. To bring us unto Christ because the law of animal sacrifice was a shadow of things to come. Read. That we. That we. That we. Who's the we again? The Israelites that kept the what? Under the covenant of animal sacrifice. Read. That we might be justified by faith. That we might be justified by faith in Christ. Come on. But after that faith is come. But after that Christ is now come. Go ahead. We are no longer under a schoolmaster. We are no longer under the law of animal sacrifice. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying right there. Give me first Peter 1 and 1. Let's see, the Apostle Peter also, he dealt with the church of Galatia. Let's see who, who are the Galatians. Some more. We just proved in Galatians 3 that the Galatians are Israelites. Read. First book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 1. Watch this. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Peter was the apostle of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. To the strangers. To the what? To the strangers. To the strangers. Come on. Scattered throughout Pontus. To the strangers which were scattered in Pontus. That's Greece. Galatia. Greece. Cappadocia. Cappadocia. That's Greece. These are the cities of Asia Minor. Read. 
Asia. Asia. Come on, that's Asia Minor. Bithynia. Bithynia. Elect. Uh -huh. According to the no, to the full knowledge of God. That's something you skip. Read that verse again. First Peter is one and one. Read that again. First book of Peter, chapter one, verse one. Watch this. Go ahead. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. to the strangers. Excuse me, sir. <coughs> First book of Peter, chapter one, verse one. Go ahead. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. to the strangers scattered through Pontus. To Pontus, come on. Galatia. Where? Galatia. Galatia. The strangers, the apostle Peter is writing to the strangers that are scattered in Galatia. Who are these strangers scattered in Galatia? Keep reading. Cappadocia. Go ahead. Asia. Uh -huh. Bithynia. Read. Elect. What? Elect. So the strangers that are scattered in Galatia, they said they are the elect of God. Let's see who is the elect of God. Keep reading. According. To the foreknowledge of God. According to the foreknowledge of God. According to the knowledge of God before. What is before? In the Old Testament. According to the knowledge of God before faith came. Who is the elect? Isaiah 45 verse 4. Let's see who the elect of God is. Scattered in Galatia. That the apostle Peter is writing to. The apostle of Jesus Christ. A black man. Read what you got. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 4. Watch this, read. For Jacob, my servant, said. Jacob, my servant, said. Jacob, go ahead. And Israel, my elect. And Israel, what? And Israel, my elect. Israel is God's elect. So the apostle Peter is writing to the strangers which are scattered in Galatia. Who are those strangers? Israelites scattered in Galatia. You see that? Today is Israelites scattered in South Africa. You understand? Because that's what they would be writing to in these last days. Because that's where we are scattered today. Back then, they were scattered in Galatia. Today, we are scattered here in South Africa, in Europe, in China, in Saudi Arabia, you understand, in Iran, in the Americas, South America, North America. We are scattered in Europe. We are scattered in Japan, in China. You understand? We are scattered in Russia. So, guess what? Today, they will be writing to Israel and scattered in the Baltics. They'll be writing to Israel scattered in Estonia. Understand that? Give me that into 28 verse 64. Because we are scattered among all nations on earth in these last days. Understand that? Read that. Through colonization and forced migration. Watch this. Come on. Slavery, colonization, and forced migration. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. Read. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people the lord shall scatter us among all people all people meaning what all the people are just mentioned all the countries are just mentioned israel is over there read from the one end of the earth from the one end of the earth even unto the other even unto the other we are on the four corners of the earth scattered having lost our identity our culture our history where we come from not only that but we've forgotten who our god is and what he looks like read and then Thou shalt serve other gods. That's why today our people, we're serving other gods as a nation now. Our people are celebrating Christmas, New Year, Mother's Day, Father's Day. They believe that the white image of Jesus that you see in the churches, they believe that that's the biblical Christ. I'm going to show you that that's not the Christ of the Bible. Read. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Our fathers don't know nothing about white Jesus. Our fathers don't know nothing about Buddha. They don't know nothing about uh, Allah, that black rock in Mecca. Read. Even wood and stone. Wood goes into Christianity, which is the Christian cross, and the stone goes into the Kaaba stone that is in Mecca, where are people that are in Islam, they bow down to, which they must come out of that. You understand? Because they are God's people. They are not Ishmael's people. They are God's people. Understand that thing. Okay? So now, watch this. Give me the book. Now, to, to, tonight's class is called Maradon. Okay? Maradon. Okay? And faith, faith and faith. Today, tonight's topic is called Maradom, Faith and Faith. Okay, now watch this. Go back to John 8.32. I'm going to show you something. Okay. I'm going to show you something. John 8.32, one more again. Come on, read that for me. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Watch this. And ye shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth, black man and black woman. Read. And the truth shall make you free. The truth will make you free. The first thing that you need to understand is that as a people, we have a rich history. As a people, we have a glorious and beautiful history which is written in the Holy Bible. Because the Bible, believe it or not, is your history book. 
The Bible tells everything about who you are, where you come from, who your God is, and what you are required to do in these last days before your king, the black Messiah, returns. You need to understand those things. Okay, now watch this. I'm going to show you your forefathers in the Bible. So that when you read it, you, you look at the Bible with new eyes. So you see yourself in it. Because you've been going to church all your life. When you read the Bible, you don't see yourself in it. You think you are being allowed to be in the book. Because why? Because in the church, the churches tell you that you are a Gentile. They are lying to you. The churches are lying to you, brothers and sisters. You are not a Gentile. They are the original Gentiles. You just live it like Gentiles, but you are the biblical Israelites. You are not original Gentiles, but you are living like Gentiles this day because you forgot who you are. But today, you're going to learn who you are this day. Give me Genesis 2 verse 7. Watch this. Okay. Let's get, let's get into this. I'm going to show you. Start first. I'm going to start with your history in the Bible before I go into deeper into the topic of tonight's class. Read that. Genesis 2 verse 7. Come on. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Read. And the Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground. The Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground. The soil. You ever hear Julius Malema says, son of the soil? Yeah, he's quoting Genesis 2 verse 7. He just don't know it. Read it again verse 7. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Go ahead. And the Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground. This is the first man, Adam. The first man was created from the dust of the ground. The soil is different shades of brown. The deeper you dig in the soil, the more darker it becomes. Understand that thing. Now watch this. Give me that in um, Sarak 17 and 1. Ecclesiastes in the Apocrypha. Chapter 17 verse 1. Those of you that don't, know, that, that, that don't have the Apocrypha, okay? The Apocrypha is the books that were taken out of the Holy Bible in the late 1700s by the Protestant white man, okay? Read that. Sarak 17, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 17, verse 1. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 17, verse 1. Read. The Lord created men of the earth. The Lord created men from the earth. The earth, the soil. Read. And turned him into it again. Now watch this. Give me the book of Job, okay? Give me the book of Job, 33, verse 4. No, no, you know what? Before you get that, give me Genesis 1 and 10. He says he created men of the earth. Okay. Genesis 1 verse 10. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 10. Read. And God called the dry land earth. God called the dry land earth. The dry land earth. The thing that the, 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 the soil that you step on every day that you take for granted, your forefather Adam was created out of that. He looked like the earth. Adam is a black man. You understand? You cannot get a white boy out of that. Read it again. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 10. Read. And God called the dry land earth. He called the dry land earth. He called the dry land earth. That's all we want. Go back to Genesis now. Chapter 2 verse 7 again. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Read. And the Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground. He formed men from the dust of the ground. The soil, the earth, the dry land earth. That's where Adam was created. The deeper you dig in the soil, the more blacker and or darker it becomes. Because I know a thought, here's a thought. I know a super Christian right now online. They'll be saying, no, but um, there's red soil. You cannot make this up. Whenever we show our, our forefathers in the Bible, here comes a Negro. They're going to be saying, no, but there's red soil. No, but there's white soil. Because the white man, you always have to defend your slave master. Give me that in Jeremiah 14 verse 2. Let's see how dark the soil was. Was it yellow? Was it red soil? Because that's where the Negro will take you to try to dispute that Adam is not a black man. Listen, Adam is a black man. That's it. Read what you got. Jeremiah 14 verse 2. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Go ahead. Judah mourning. He says the Jews are mourning. The Jews. Go ahead. And the gate there of language. There's no leaders in the nation of the real Jews of the Bible. Not those white people in our land calling themselves Jewish. Those are not the real Jews of the Bible. Those are imposters in our land. Read. They are black unto the ground. They are what? They are black unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. So, no, Adam was not created out of red soil. No, no. He was created out of the soil that is black. So, Adam was a black man. So, you understand? So, you doubting Thomas is online. Read again verse 2. The book of Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Go ahead. 
Judah Mone. I know those of you that love Master more than the Master loves himself, you're twitching like a robot right now. You're going to be all right. Drink this clean glass of water right now, brothers and sisters online. Go ahead. Judah Mone. The Jews are mourning. We're mourning. Okay. The black man is always complaining because we're at the bottom of all nations. You understand? But the Lord has given us the answers which is written in the Holy Bible, our book. Read. And the gate day of language. Mm -hmm. They are black unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. So Adam was not created from red, red soil or pink or green soil. He mm -mm. was created from what? The air. The deeper you dig in the soil, the more darker it becomes. You understand? That's why today you've got dark skin people, dark skin, dark skin blacks, and you've got light brown blacks. But it's my yellow bones. You understand? Some look like peach black afros. Yes. But guess what? We all Israel. Understand that thing. So remember, Moses is the one that wrote Genesis. Let's see what he looked like. Okay? Now, give me the book of Exodus chapter 2 verse 16. Moses wrote the book of Genesis. Okay? Let's see our forefather Moses, what he looks like. Okay? Exodus 21. Get ready to show those books now. Okay? Exodus chapter 21 verse 16. Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 16. Read. And he that stealeth a man. No, 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 no. Is it Exodus 21, that one? No, Exodus 2, I'm sorry. Exodus 2, verse 16. Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 2, verse 16. Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 2, verse 16. We're going here to prove that Moses was a black man. Read. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, mm -hmm. and they came and drew water, and filled the troughs to water their father's flocks. Read. Really? And the shepherds came and drove them away. So the shepherds came and drove the flocks away. Okay. Read. Really? But Moses stood up and helped them. So Moses helped the seven daughters of the priest of Midian. Go ahead. And watered the flock. Mm -hmm. And when they came, and when they came to reward their father. He said, how is it that he has come so soon today? Watch this. And they said, an Egyptian deliver us, delivered us out of the head of the shepherd. He says, and a what? And they said, an Egyptian. A what? An Egyptian. A what? An Egyptian. They said, an Egyptian did what? Delivered us out of the head of the shepherd. So they thought Moses was an Egyptian. What do the Egyptians look like? Give me the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. The definition of ham. Ham in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Okay. Ham in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Okay. We get we're going here to go. We're gonna go into the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary to see what the Egyptians look like. Because today the so-called quote unquote Egyptians today they look Arabic. That, 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 that doesn't even sound right. The modern Egyptians today, they look Arabic. Hmm? That doesn't mean, that's an oxymoron, right? They look Arabic. The Egyptians, Moses is mistaken for an Egyptian. Now read that. Reading from the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Put the Bible Dictionary on the screen so the people can see it. To see what we're reading from. The, that's, that's it right there, the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Read that. Reading from the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, uh -huh. page 213. Watch this, go ahead. Ham. Ham. Ham is one of the sons of Noah. Go ahead. The youngest son of Noah. Ham is the youngest son of Noah. Go ahead. Born probably about 96 years before the flood. Read. And one of eight persons to live through the flood. Watch this. He became the progenitor. The progenitor, meaning father. Ham became the father. Come on. He became the progenitor of the dark race. He became the progenitor of the what? Of the dark race. Stop right there. Ham became the progenitor of the dark races. Go ahead. Not the Negroes. He, Ham is not the father of the Negroes. The Negroes is the Bantu. The Negro is the Bantu, which is the so-called black man of today. The Negro is the Bantu. Go ahead. But the Egyptians. But the what? But the Egyptians. Stop right there. That's all I want. 
Ham is not the father of the Negro. Now, give me the definition of the Negro now. Negro. Because somebody might be asking. Because the scholars know that Ham is not the father of the Negro or the Bantu that is called today. The so-called Bantu. Okay? Now, we're going to go to this Zondervan Pictorial Bible Dictionary. We're going to get the definition of the term Negro. Okay? Now, read that. Reading from the doc. Zondervan's Pictorial Bible Dictionary. Uh huh. Negro. Negro. Let's get the. We're gonna get. Go. We were going on to get the definition of the term Negro. Go ahead. One of a dark-skinned race. Ne a Negro is Negro. Just means black. One of a dark-skinned race. Go ahead. Having woolly hair. Having woolly hair meaning Afro hair. Woolly hair means Afro hair. Go ahead. Flat nose. Flat nose. Thick protruding lips. We've got big lips. Go ahead. And a prognathous form of skull. Okay, beautiful skull. Go ahead. Native to Africa. Native to Africa, meaning Jerusalem. Go ahead. Where the term Negro. Where the term Negro. Go ahead. Applies most specifically. The term Negro applies most specifically to what? To the Bantu stock. Stop right there. The term Negro applies more specifically to the Bantu stock. Go ahead. Of the south. Of the south. And the people of the central and west areas. You see that in the south, the in South Africa, West Africa, and what? And the people of the central and west areas. You see that thing? South Africa, West Africa, and what? And, and did you say east? Central. Central. You understand? So the term Negro applies more specifically to the Bantu stock. Understand that? We know what we're talking about. You understand? Brothers, do you have it so the, the people can see it online? Okay, do you have it? Okay, we'll show you in due time. Okay, but go back to Exodus 2 verse... Um, what verse you in? Exodus chapter 2. Yeah, read verse 19. Because Moses was mistaken for an Egyptian. The book of Exodus, chapter 2, verse 19. Watch this. And they said, an Egyptian delivered, delivered us out of the hand of the shepherd. You see that thing? An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherd. So they mistaken Moses for an Egyptian. So Moses was a black man, but he was not an Egyptian. He was a what? He was a so-called Negro or Bantu today. Understand that? So Moses was a black man. Now, give me the, 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 the first page. Now, give me the book, Holy Land. Give me the book, The Holy Land. I want the people to see what Moses looks like. Okay? I want the people to see our forefathers what he looked like. Okay, show the people so the people can see this thing. Is that the one? I don't believe that's the one. That's the next page. Yeah, that's part of it. That part, that part right there. Yes, that's part of the picture. But what you are seeing here, those are Israelites. So in the meantime... What you're looking at here on the screen is actually those are is those are the twelve. These are the leaders of Israel. Those are the elders of Israel that was with Moses. But I want you to see Moses himself when the Egyptian, when the Egyptians was being drowned. You understand in the Red Sea. I want you to see that thing. Show them Moses drowning the Egyptians at the command of the Mosai. Okay, bear with us, brothers and sisters. Okay, I want you to see this thing. Okay, there it is right there. Show the people. I want the people to see what our forefather Moses looked like. Okay? Yeah, that's it right there. You see Moses right there? Show them with the castle. Yeah? Secondly, that's him right there. That's Moses right there. Do they see the castle online? Okay. So, but what you're seeing here, that's Moses right there on the left. And that's Moses also on the right. You see on the right, the father, the Moses right, you see that? On my right. You see there's Moses right there? The Egyptians in the in the Red Sea drowning. Look at it. That's our forefather Moses right there. A black man. That picture right there, that's a painting. Okay. Read that again. Exodus 2 verse 19. The book of Exodus chapter 2 verse 19. Go ahead. And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherd. He says, the Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherd. Go ahead. And also threw water enough for us. And watered the floor. You see that? So the Mo Moses was mistaken for an Egyptian. Okay. Give me Job 33 verse 4 now. Job 33 verse 4. 
We just showed you that Moses is a black man. That's what you see right there. Okay? Moses is a black man. Read what you got. The book of Job, chapter 33, verse 4. Read. The Spirit of God has made... This is our forefather Job speaking now. The prophet Job. He says what? The Spirit of God has made... The Spirit of the Most High God has made him... Come on. And the breath of the Almighty has given me life. That's the same thing that was given to our forefather Adam. Hold that. Go back to Genesis 2, verse 7. Okay? Genesis 2, verse 7. What our forefather Job is saying here, he's saying the same way that Adam was given the breath of life, he also was given the breath of life, okay, which is God's laws. Read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. Read. And the Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground. He formed men from the dust of the ground. Adam was a black man. Come on. And breathed into his nostrils mm. the breath of life. The breath of life is not talking about oxygen here. It's talking about God's laws. Read. And man became a living soul. And man became a living soul. So go back to Job 33 now. Okay, Job 33 verse 4. The book of Job chapter 33 verse 4. Come on. The spirit of God has made him. The same way Adam was the spirit of the Lord made him. It made our forefather Job. Go ahead. And the breath of the Almighty has given me life. Watch this. Verse 6 now. Come on. Verse 6. Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. Read. I also am, I what? I also I also I also I also come on am formed out of the clay. He says I was also I also was formed out of the clay just like our forefather Adam. A clay clay is not white. Clay there's no green clay, there's no red clay. Mm -mm, clay is black. You understand? Read again verse 6. The book of Job chapter 33 verse 6. Go ahead. Behold I am according to thy wish in God's stead. Read. I also am formed out of the clay. I also, I also am formed out of the clay. Now give Job 30 verse 30. Okay. Three chapters before. Read that. Let's see what our forefather Job look like. The book of Job chapter 30 verse 30. Read. My skin is black upon me. Stop right there. Read again. My skin is black upon this me. This is our forefather Job. He says, my skin, my skin is black upon me because in the christian church they say no that's not his color that was his condition listen we read in the color he says black black is not a condition black is a color you see christianity has brainwashed the black man and the black woman in the christian church every sunday you go there listen christianity is the worst drug on the market christianity is worse than crack christianity is worse than nyaupe you understand? Every Sunday, our people go to the Christian church to smoke the spiritual cocaine called Christianity. That spiritual nyaupe called Christianity. It's time to repent. It's time to come out of those Christian churches. You understand? They are pushing to us white supremacy. Them days are over. The prophets are back. We're going to teach you the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now watch this. Give me the book of um, 1 Samuel chapter, 40, chapter 17, verse 42. Okay, our forefather King David. Let's see what he was. What let's see what he looked like. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 42. Get ready with the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Okay. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 42. Read that. First book of Samuel, chapter 14. No, no, chapter 17, verse 42. Pay attention. Stay with me. Come on. First book of Samuel, chapter 17, verse 42. Read. And when the Philistines looked about... The Philistines, these were Hamites. Okay, go ahead. And saw David. He disdained him. He hated David. The Phil this Philistine, this dirty Hamite, he, de he despised King David. Watch this. For he was but a youth. But he was but a youth, come on. And ruddy. And what? And ruddy. He was ruddy. King David was ruddy. He says, King David was ruddy. Go ahead. And of a fair countenance. Meaning he was black and beautiful. That's what he's saying right there. He was ruddy and of a fair countenance. He was black and he was beautiful. Get the definition of the word ruddy now. We're going back to the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Take notes, brothers and sisters online. This is your history, okay? To hell with desperate housewives. To hell with East Dingo. To hell with, what's the other shows that we're playing on TV? Uzalo and all that. And Imbeu. To hell with all that. This is your history. This is more important. This is not his buyer. To hell with that. Read that. Reading from the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Okay, come on. Page 510. Mm. Radi. Radi. 
Radi. We're going to read the definition of radi. Okay? Yeah, that's it right there. Now read the definition of radi again. Reading from the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Read. Page 510. Mm -hmm. Radi. That's the, we're reading the definition of radi right there. Come on. A way used to refer to a red or fair complexion. So that's the, that's the wrong definition of the word radi. The radi don't mean red. But radi does mean fair complexion. Meaning beautiful. Go ahead. In contrast. In contrast. So they are telling you, they read, the, the scholars are telling you that the definition of the word radi was not put the right way. But they're going to tell you the true definition of the word radi. Keep reading. In contrast. In contrast. Come on. To the dark skin. To the what? To the dark skin. Come on. Of the Hebrew. You see that? In contrast to the dark skin of the Hebrew. That's the true definition of the word radi. The dark skin of the Hebrew. Okay. First Samuel chapter 17 verse 42. It's even written there. Go back to First Samuel chapter 17 verse 42. So we, now we know what King David looked like. King David was a dark skinned man. Was a black man. He was black and beautiful. Read. First book of Samuel chapter 17 verse 42. Go ahead. And when the Philistines looked about mm -hmm. and saw David. Read. He disdained him. He hated him. For he was but a youth. And right. He was black and of a fair countenance. And beautiful. Give me that in Proverbs now, chapter 1 and 1. Let's see the son of King David, King Solomon. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. Read that. Proverbs 1 and 1. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. The Proverbs of Solomon. The Proverbs of King Solomon. Come on. The son of David. The what? The son of David. The son of King David. Come on. King of Israel. So now we just read that King David is a black man. Now we're going to read about his son, King Solomon. That he, what color does he look like? Give me that in uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and 1. Song of Solomon 1 and 1. Read what you got. Okay. We're going here, brothers and sisters, to show you your history in the Bible. Okay, come on. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon. I mean, King Solomon wrote the book of Song of Solomon. Okay? Because in the Christian church, they say the Song of Solomon was written by a black woman. That's not in the Bible. You understand? They say it was written by a black woman and an Egyptian woman. That's madness. Okay? Read that verse again, verse 1. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. Watch this. The Song of Songs. The Song of Songs, which is whose? Which is Solomon. Which is Solomon. So King Solomon wrote this book. Now read verse 5. Song of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5. Come on. I am black. I am what? I am black. He says he's black. Okay, go ahead. But come. He says I'm black and I'm beautiful. He says he's ruddy and of a fair countenance. Just like his father. King Solomon says he's what? I am black. I am black. But come. And beautiful. Go ahead. Oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem. Read, meaning you twelve tribes of Israel. Come on. As the tents of Kedar. Read. As the curtains of Solomon. Watch this. Look not upon me, because I am black. Don't hate us because we're black. Don't hate us because we are God's chosen people. We are God's chosen people. You understand? Now watch this. Now, give me the next book now. Give me the next book. Treasures of the world, rulers of Russia. Okay. Treasures of the world. Rulers of Russia. You're going to go to page 16. Okay, you can take that off the screen now. Go to the next book. I'm going into it to show you because we have books that show you, that show our history, what our forefathers look like. You understand? Our beautiful history that they will, you're not going to learn this at your school. Not, not, neither will you learn it at your Christian church. Not only that, you're not going to learn this at universities. Our people going to universities, they've got degrees, they've got masters and PhDs. They've got doctorates, but they don't know who they are. How crazy is that? You've got a brother who's a theoretical physicist, but he don't know that he's a Jew. That's crazy to me. You've got a master's in whatever, but you don't know that you are a Jew. You don't know who your forefathers look like in the Bible. You don't know who you, what your God looks like in the Bible. You understand? You don't know what your purpose is upon this earth, but you've got a PhD. It's time to learn your true history, the history that's going to prosper you. Okay, understand that. Okay, now go to page page 16. Page 16. Okay. 
That's it right there. What you see there is Mary and Christ. What color are they? Black. That's the black woman right there. And that's the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ, as a child. You understand? Now go to, uh, go to the next page. Go to page 18. Okay? We're going to go to page 18. I'm going to show you the picture. That's what you see there on the screen is Mary and Christ. They are all black. Okay? Mary is a black woman. Christ is a black man. Understand that. Okay? Even when he was a child, he was still black. Okay? You understand? But for some ungodly reason, now we see this made-up image of Christ on TV. He has changed color. He is white. No, he's red because that's what they call themselves. They say they are white. But he's red with long stringy hair and blue eyes. That's not in the Bible. You understand? Now, is that it? Not? That's it right there. That's it right there. That's Jesus Christ right there. You see Jesus Christ on a donkey? On an ass? That's, that's, that's Jesus Christ right there walking into Jerusalem. That's him right there. Blow it up big so they can see it. Blow it up some more. I want, I want the picture to... Yeah. That's it right there. Raise it up. Raise it up a little bit. I want the people to see Christ on a donkey. That's him right there. Look at him right there. This is a book that was written, that was painted and written in Russia when we were ruling over there. Our forefathers painted them. That's the Messiah right there with the halo on his back. Look at him. Black. Okay. Now, go to page 19. Give me the next page now. Okay. Give me the next page. Okay, that's it right there. See, that's Mary right there holding Christ. You see the apostles on the left and then the right, all black. Look at the angels on the top guarding the picture. You understand? Okay. Raise it up, raise it up. Yeah, that's it right there. You see the apostles? Look at the apostles. That's the apostles right there. Okay. That's the two cents on either side of them. That's what you are seeing right there. Now, give me the book of Zacharias. Go back to Christ on a donkey. Go back to the picture with Christ on a donkey. Okay? Let's see the prophecy. Blow it up big so the people can see it. You give me Zechariah 9 verse 9. Okay? Read it. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. Come on. The book of Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. Watch this. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Rejoice, says, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. The daughter of Zion is the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Shout, O mm. daughter of Jerusalem. Read. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He says, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. That's our king right there. You see that king? You see Christ on a donkey right there? That's our king that cometh unto us. Read. He is just mm -hmm. and having salvation. Because he's going to deliver his people from captivity when he returns. Read. Lowly. Mm. And riding upon an ass. And riding upon an ass. That's what you see him right there on a donkey. That's what we're reading. And that's what you're seeing, black men and black women online. Go ahead. And upon a colt, the fall of an ass. The fall of an ass. He says, upon a colt, the fall of an ass. Let's see if the prophecy was fulfilled. Give me Matthew 21 and 1. Matthew chapter 21 verse 1. Because what Zechariah prophesied about, we're about to read it right now in the book of Matthew. Matthew 21 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 1. Remember, we're looking at the Messiah right there, a black man. Go ahead. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, mm. then sent Jesus two disciples. He said to his two disciples, uh, go ahead. Saying unto them, mm -hmm. go into the village over against you. Right. And straightway ye shall find an ass tied. An ass tied, go ahead. And a colt with them, mm -hmm. loose them, and bring them unto me. Read. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them. The Lord hath need of that ass. Go ahead. And straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, You see, that, that might, it might be fulfilled that was spoken by the prophet Zacharias in Zechariah 9 and 9. Go ahead. Tell ye, the daughter of Zion, mm -hmm. behold, the king cometh. The king cometh, come on. 
Thy king cometh unto thee. Thy king cometh unto thee. He's quoting the book of Zacharias. Read. Meek and sitting upon an ass. Mm -hmm. And a colt the fall of an ass. You see that thing? And a colt the fall of an ass. That's what we just read in Zacharias. Okay. Now, give me, give me the book, the book now. Give me the book, Atlas of the Christian Church. Atlas of the Christian Church. I want you to give me that book now. Atlas of the Christian Church. Okay, come on. Atlas of the Christian Church, page 15. We're still dealing with the Messiah, what he looks like. Okay. Atlas of the Christian Church. Brothers and sisters, we're going to show you the books that we're reading from, the books that we're showing you from. Okay. Read them. Now show the book, page 15. Atlas of the Christian Church. Go to page 15. I want the people to see this thing. Okay, brothers and sisters, that's the book that you're looking at there. It's the title of the book is called Atlas of the Christian Church. We are on page 15. Now, I want you to read the highlighted part in green. And be ready to load the next picture next to it. Okay, come on. Reading from the Atlas of the Christian Church. Uh -huh. Page 15. Read. Bottom right. Bottom right, come on. Christ teaching the apostles. A 4th century fresco. 4th century. 4th century fresco. Read that part again in green. Bottom right. Mm -hmm. Christ teaching the apostles. We're going we're gonna to see what he looks like. He says Christ teaching the apostles. Okay. In bottom right. So brothers, I want you to blow it up big so that people can see that thing. Okay. What we're reading. Okay. There's the Messiah right there. Okay, show it to the people. Okay, right. Right. That's it right there. That's it. You see the Messiah in the center? What color is he? Black. That's the black man. That's the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Our King, our Lord, our Savior. Understand that? Look at him. Christ and the apostles. You see the apostles on the left and the apostles on the right. That's our forefather. That's our Lord and Savior right there. Okay? Now, go to... Um... Go to the next the next page. Go to page 38 now. Yeah, go to page 38. Is that where we are? No, page 38, yeah. Page 38. Right. I want you to pay attention to this, okay? Because what you're going to come to realize is that the nations that have conquered us, particularly the white men, He's been working painstakingly since he came back in the power in the end. Give me that in Malachi 1 verse 4 while the brothers are getting their picture together. I'm going to show you something, right? One thing that you're going to come to realize is that the white man has been working night and day to whitewash your images in the Bible and in the history books. When they conquered us, not only did they conquer us, they, not only did they steal our precious things, not only did they rob us of our riches, but they all also robbed us of our artwork they robbed us of our history books and they changed our images in the in those books. Not only that, but in the Bible as well. Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Watch this. This is what the white man, this is during the time when the white man came back in power in the earth. The year was 1453. The time period called the Renaissance. Read that. The book of Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Go ahead. Whereas Edom said, mm -hmm. we are impoverished. We are impoverished, read. But we will return and build the desolate places. Edom is the biblical name for the white man. Edom. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. they shall build, but I will throw down. They shall build, but I will throw down. That's why the white men, when they came back into power, they started building, they are rebuilding their cities that was desolate during when, when Rome fell in 193 AD. They began to rebuild. That's why they're building mega cities. You understand? Mega, mega towns. They are building skyscrapers, all manner of civil engineering projects that they are doing to rebuild what they once lost in 193 AD. Go ahead. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. So God says the white man is the border of wickedness. They are the beginning and the end of all evil on earth. Read. And the people against whom. And the people, meaning the nation, come on. Against whom. The Lord has indignation forever. And the nation against whom the Lord has great anger forever. Okay, is that it on that? Is that it on yes, that? Yes, sir. Okay, so you've got it, brothers? Okay, now, share it with the people. We're reading from the same book that we just read. Okay, I want you to blow it up big so 
the people can see what we're about to read. That highlighted part, icons and iconoclasm. Iconoclasm is the whitewashing of images, okay? That's what the term iconoclasm actually means. The whitewashing of images, okay? Blow that highlighted part. Blow it up. Can you see it? Read it. Icons and iconoclasm. Uh-huh, go ahead. The Greek word icon, image, mm -hmm. retains even its restricted sense of religious image. You Okay, it says it what? Retains even in its restricted sense of religious image. We're going to see how true that is. It says it's retaining its what? Its religious sense, right? Let's see how true that is. Go ahead. The implication of a true resemblance. He says, this what we're about to see is the implication of a true re resemblance of an image. Go ahead. In the 6th and 7th centuries, the cult of saints, holy persons and their images intensified. He says, holy persons and their images is intensified. Now, r raise it up, raise up the picture so they can see the quote-unquote holy images and Im holy images that are intensified. Because they say it retained its what is true sense of resemblance, right? That what you are seeing here, okay? Share it to the people, share it with the people. Share that with the people. What you are seeing right there, that's supposed to be Jesus Christ, by the way. What they cause according to what we just read, they said that right there it's it's a true resemblance of the biblical image of Christ. They are lying to you. This right here is called iconoclasm. Give me that in First Maccabees 3.48. I'm going to show you what the white man did. This what you are seeing, what you are seeing on the screen, that's not Jesus Christ. That's Caesar Borgia, the second son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome, whom Leonardo da Vinci painted as the new image of Christ in the 1400s. But I'm going to show you the true image of the Messiah, okay, according to the Bible. What you are seeing, all the, the pictures of the Messiah we showed you does not look anywhere close to this. This is the whitewashed image. Is the new painted image by Leonardo da Vinci as the new depiction of Christ, which is completely false. Read that. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 48. Chapter 3, verse 48. Pay attention. Come on. First book of Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. Read. And laid open the book of the law. The, the Greeks, the Greeks laid open, the Greeks is white people. They laid open the books of the law. Go ahead. The books of the law is the Bible. Read. Wherein the even had sought to paint the likeness of their image. You see that? The white men sought to paint the likeness of their images in our Holy Bible. And that's what you are seeing on the screen right there. They painted, they had Leonardo da Vinci paint the new image of Christ and they made him white. You understand? The son of the Pope Alexander VI of Rome. Now I'm going to show you right next to, right in the next page in the book, they show you the true image of Christ and the apostles. You understand? But the honor is not intensified. But I'm going to show you what it looks like. It does not look anywhere close to what we just read. You understand? In that book, Iconoclasm. Okay? Watch this. Come on. I want the people to see, magnify it so the people can see the picture. And the writings on the left. I want the people to see that thing. Okay, read that again. First Maccabees 3 verse 48. But what you are seeing, what you are about to see, we're going to show you the picture that has been the true picture of what the apostles look like and what Christ looked like. Come on, brothers. I still have a lot to cover. Okay? I need you to stay with me. Read that. First Maccabees 3 verse 48. First book of Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. Read. And they laid open the book of the law. Read. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. They sought to paint the likeness of their images in our book. I'm going to show you that right next to the picture that you just saw of the white new, the white image of Jesus, now right next to it is the true depiction of the Messiah. In the book, okay, I want the people to see this thing. Okay, are we ready? I want the people magnified so the people can see. I want the people to see this thing. Now, what you're looking at here, this right here, is the opposite of what you just saw. This is the depiction of Christ and the apostles. You see the apostles right there on the left? You see they are pointing at the image of Christ on the wall. 
Now I want you to read the highlighted part in pink. Read that. In this 11th century manuscript. The 11th century. Okay. Read. Illumination. Mm -hmm. Right. Iconoclasm judgment are shown sparing an image of Christ. They are sparing a what? An image of Christ. An image of Christ on the right. You see the black image of Christ right there. So right there you see the apostles pointing at the image of the Messiah. Read that part again. Come on. In this 11th century manuscript. 11th century. We was ruling during this time. During the dark ages. Go ahead. Illumination. Right. Iconoclast churchmen mm. are shown sparing an image of Christ. Images could take the form of ivories as well as paintings. Okay, now show me the biblical, show me the depiction of Christ that we, we had it drawn. Show us that. I'm going to show you the black image of the, the Messiah. I'm going to show you the image of the, of the Messiah in the Bible. What you've been taught, brothers and sisters, in the churches, in the media, on the movies, is all false. We want to show you, according to the Bible, that Christ is a black man. Understand that? Read that. Show us, show, show the people. Okay, now give me Revelation 1 14. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. Okay, come on. Come on. There it is. Now read the Bible. Revelation 1 14. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. Read. His head and his head. His head and his hairs. Come on. Were white like wood. Were white like what? Were white like wood. He said the hair of Christ's head was white and the texture of his hair was woolly. Now go to the go to the, the pictorial Zondervan Bible dictionary. Read the definition of Negro. Okay. Reading from the Zondervan's Pictorial Bible Dictionary. Come on. Page 2939. Read. Negro. Uh -huh. One of a dark skinned race. One of a dark skinned race. Come on. Having woolly hair. Having what? Having woolly hair. Woolly hair is black people's hair. It's an afro. That's what you're seeing on the screen. Christ has an afro, woolly hair, black people's hair. Now go back to Revelation 1 14. One more again. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14. Come on. His head and his hairs were white like wool. His hair, his head and his hairs were white like wool. Christ had white hair, not only that, but he had woolly hair, woolly textured hair, hair of black people, afro hair. That's what you are seeing there. Go ahead. As white as snow. Fully white, come on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because Jesus Christ's eyes was red. Fire is red. The reason why his eyes was red is because he drank wine in moderation. Genesis 42, 49 verse 12. Genesis 49 and verse 12. Come on. The book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 12. Go ahead. His eyes shall be red with wine. He says his eyes shall be red with wine. <coughs> Because Christ drank wine in moderation. So go back to Revelation 1 now. Okay. That's why Jesus Christ's eyes was red. Because of wine. Okay. He drank wine in moderation. Read that. The book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. Come on. His head and his hands were white like wood. Read. As white as snow. Read. And his eyes as a flame of fire. Because of wine. Come on. And his feet. Like unto fine brass. He says his feet was like fine brass. So John is looking at Jesus Christ's feet. He says, listen, his feet, the complexion of his feet was like fine brass. The color of brass, brass is brown. Brass is a brown color, brothers and sisters. Like a five cent. You understand? Brass is brown. Like a five cent. So the color of your skin, the color of your skin, the color of your feet is the same color as your eyes and your arms. This color of your face, your arms, and the rest of your body. Understand that thing. So Christ was a black man. Understand that. Okay. Go ahead. As if they burned in a furnace. Now you take that brass, you burn it, it turns black. So Christ is a black man, according to the Bible. Understand that. So what you've been taught is a lie. Give me Daniel 10 verse 5 and 6. Daniel chapter 10 verse 5 and 6. I've got a lot to cover. This class is going to be long. Pay attention. Okay. Back in the day, you'll be in the clubs. Today, you're going to learn. Stay, stay focused. Okay? Take notes. Take notes. This is your history. There's nothing more important than this. Read what you got. The book of Daniel, chapter, five, chapter 10, verse 5. Read. 
Then, then I lifted up my eyes and looked. Read. And behold, mm -hmm. a certain man clothed in linen. A certain man clothed in linen. That's the man that you're looking on the screen right now. He's clothed in linen. Come on. Whose loins were girded with fine gold of Ufa. He was wearing a gold belt. Read. His body also was like the bell. He was wearing a green and a gold clothing. That's what you are seeing on the screen. He was wearing a green and a gold clothing. Read. And his face as the appearance of light. Because he had wisdom. Read. And his eyes mm -hmm. as lamps of fire. His eyes as lamps of fire because of wine. He drank wine in moderation. Read on. And his arms and his feet. His arms and his feet, come on. Like in color. Like in what? Like in color. So Daniel is describing the complexion of our, of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Like in color to what? To polished brass. Meaning brass bent in a furnace. So Jesus Christ is and was and always have been a black man according to the Holy Bible. So don't be fooled by Christianity. You understand? That spiritual house. That spiritual cocaine house. Where they feed you spiritual cocaine every Sunday. Okay. Do you have another picture? Okay. All right. Daniel 10 verse 5 and 6. One more again. Come on. The book of Daniel chapter 10 verse 5. Read. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked. Mm -hmm. And behold, a certain man clothed in linen. Read. Whose loins were gathered with fine gold of Ufed. Read. His body also was like the barrel. Come on. And his face as the appearance of lightning. Read. And his eyes as lamps of fire. Mm. And his arms and his feet. His arms and his feet. Come on. Like in color. Like in color. What color was he? To polished brass. Brass bent in a furnace. You understand? You take that brass color, you burn it, it's going to turn black. Understand that? Okay, now first magnify the writing so we know. First magnify that writing in, or in, 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 uh, in pink there. We're going to read the writing first and then we're going to show the picture after. Okay. All right. Okay, that's it right there. Share it. Now I want you to read that. Okay, in the meantime, you can magnify the, 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 um, the title of the book. Okay, now read that. Another Christian wall painting mm. of the 4th century portrays Jesus as the good shepherd. As the what? As the good shepherd. So this picture, what we're going to show, it portrays Christ as the good shepherd. Read it again. Another Christian wall painting uh -huh. of the 3rd century portrays Jesus as the good shepherd, mm. tending his flock of sheep. The sheep are the symbol of his spiritual children. Now watch this. Okay, so now we're going to show you the picture that we just read about. Watch this. Okay, that's it. It's ready. Share it. Now what you are looking at right there, that's the Messiah. Look at him. Black. Look at the Messiah right there. A black man. What are we reading? The Bible. What are we showing? We're showing you history books that they're not going to show you in the Christian church, that demonic place. They're not going to show you this because they say what? All nations can be saved. That's not in the Bible. Okay? That is not in the Holy Bible. Now, I want you to go to the next book, Atlas of the Christian Church, page 22. Page 22. Show that picture for us. Keep that picture on the screen for now while you prepare the other one. Okay? Now, I want you to, I want you to see that good shepherd. Give me John 10 real quick. John 10. While they're looking for this, John the 10th chapter. John chapter 10 when he says, I'm the good shepherd. John 10. Read verse 11. The book of John chapter 10 verse 11. Watch this. I am the good shepherd. This is Christ speaking. He says, I am the good shepherd. Go ahead. The good shepherd giveth life for the sheep. Giveth his life for the sheep. Go ahead. I am the good shepherd. I am what? I am the good shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd. Read. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. He giveth his life for the sheep. So Christ is that good shepherd. Okay, verse 14. Verse 14. Read. I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Read. And I know my sheep. And I know my sheep. Read. And I am known of mine. And I'm known of mine. That's what we're reading here. That's it right there. That's it right there. Okay. I just want the people to see the picture because I want to move on now. I've got a whole lot to cover. Okay. I've got a whole lot to cover. All right. I'm going over the history because I want the people to see the stuff that the Bible is saying 
and the stuff that has been hidden from you with this whitewashing of images. But we have the history books to show it. You understand? The white man did not whitewash every image. Okay? He failed on some of them. Yeah, that's all I want. Show the picture. Okay? That's the picture right there. You see the good shepherd again? That's the good shepherd. That's Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Look at him. A black man with a lamb, with a lamb on his back. You understand? Look at him right there. That's the Messiah. That's the good shepherd. John 10, 14 again. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 14. Read. I am the good shepherd, mm -hmm. and I know my sheep. Read. And I am known of mine. And I'm known of mine. Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that, on that picture. Now, what I want you to do, brothers, give me, uh, give me, give me the next book. Okay. Give me the treasures of Russia. Treasures of the world, rulers of Russia. Okay. You're going to give me the first pages. I'm going to show you what the angels look like. The angels are not these naked white babies that you see. You understand? These naked white babies that you see, the angels don't look like that. Give me Ezekiel 1 and 5. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 5. I'm going to show you what the angels look like. Okay. That's it right there. That's all I want. Share it with the people. That's it right there. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 5. Read that. The book of Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 5. Read also out of the midst thereof mm -hmm. came the likeness of four living creatures. The likeness of four living creatures. These are the angels. Come on. And this was their appearance. Read. Really? This was their what? And this was their appearance. Now, we're going to show you their appearance of what the angels look like. Okay. Read. Really? And they had the likeness of a man. Mm -hmm. And everyone had four faces. Everyone had what? And everyone had four faces. Read. Really? And everyone had four wings. Go ahead. And their feet were straight feet. Their feet were straight feet. Come on. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. Ray. Really? And they sparkled. They what? And they sparkled. They sparkled. Remember, we're reading the likeness of the angels. What the angels looked like. Share the picture. Come on. Read that, read that part again. And they what? And they sparkled like the color of Burnished brass. They sparkled the, the color of burnished brass. That's what you are seeing right there on the screen. Come on, brothers. That's what you are seeing right there, brothers and sisters. That's the picture of the angels. Okay, blow it up big so they can see it. That's what you're seeing right there. You see there at the center? That's Michael the archangel. Look at him. A black man. Look at the angels. Look at the other angels above him. You understand? Black. All black. The angels are never white. You see, you see angels with halos at the back of them? Those are angels. Read the verse again. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, verse 7. Read. And their feet were straight feet. Come on. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. Read. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. They sparkled like the color of burnished brass. So the angels are black. These naked white babies that you see on TV, that you see on statues, that you see on paintings when you go to Michelangelo, you go to Sentinel, and all that, the angels don't look like that. The angels are not naked white babies that you see all the time. The angels were black, they were black, the angels are black and they are beautiful. Understand that? Okay. Share that picture again. Share it. I'm looking at it. Share it. Do we have it, brothers? Yes, sir. We have the next one, sir. Show the next one. I want the people to see this. Okay. Because I know right now online people are getting impatient. Stay in the spirit. We show you the greatest history out here. The history that you're not going to learn at school. The history that you're not going to learn. Certainly not at the Christian church. You're not going to learn that. Okay. So show the people. Blow it up big a little bit. Just blow it up some more. Okay. Jump down to verse 18. Come on. The book of Ezekiel. Chapter 1 verse 18. Read. As for the likeness of the living creature. The angels now. Come on. Their appearance. Show the original picture that you just showed. Read. Their appearance was like burning coals of fire. Their appearance was like burning coals of fire. Go ahead. And like the appearance of lamps. No, no, go back. Read that verse again. The appearance was like what? As for the likeness of the four living. Leave it right there. Don't move it. Leave it right there. Read that verse again. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, verse 18. Come on. As for the likeness of the living of the, the living creature. Now we're gonna see what the angels look like. Pay attention, black men and black women online. Take notes. Okay, go ahead. 
Their appearance uh -huh. was like burning coals of fire. Was like burning coals of fire. Coals are not white. Coals are pitch black. The angels are black. That's what you're looking at right here. Beautiful. This is your history, black man, that you will never learn in school. You're not going to learn this, certainly not in the Christian church. Understand that. Okay, now, give me the book, Atlas of the Christian Church, page 14. Okay, I'm going to show you what the holy apostles, what they look like. The holy apostles, watch this. Atlas of the Christian Church, page 14. Okay, we're going to go to page 14. I'm going to show the apostle Paul. I'm going to show you what the Apostle Paul looks like. Give me Acts 21 verse 37. Because just like our forefather Moses was mistaken for an Egyptian, the Apostle Paul also was mistaken for an Egyptian. Now read that. Acts 21 verse 37. The book of Acts chapter 21 verse 37. Watch this. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, mm -hmm. he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Read. Who said, Canst thou... Canst Thou speak Greek? Can now can you speak Greek? Go ahead. Are not thou that Egyptian? Are not thou that Egyptian? Are you not that African? That's what they are asking him. Are you not that African? Are you not that Egyptian? Because the Apostle Paul is being mistaken from any for an Egyptian. Go ahead. Which before these days made us an uproar mm -hmm. and led us out into the wilderness. 4,000 men that were murderers. So the Apostle Paul here is talking to a Roman. You understand? An actual Roman. He's saying, listen, are you not that Egyptian? Keep going. Art not thou that Egyptian? Mm -hmm. Which before these days made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness. 4,000 men that were murderers. Next verse. Verse 39. Come on, watch this. But Paul said, mm -hmm. I am a man. Which am a Jew. I am a man which am a what? I am a man which am a Jew. He says, listen, I am a man which am a Jew. He's telling him his nationality, his identity, who he is. He says, I'm a Jew. So, so in the name, finish that verse. I want you to read what you see on the screen. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 21, verse 39. Read. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew uh -huh. of Tarsus. A city in Cilicia. Read. A citizen of no mean city. He says, I don't come from the ghettos. Go ahead. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. Now watch this. Now read. Read that part right there. The part in pink. Can you see it? Yes, sir. Read it. St. Paul, mm -hmm. one of the persecuting Pharisees, was indeed converted. You see, so what you see on the right right there, that's the Apostle Paul. A black, that's the Apostle Paul right there. A black man. Look at him. He was mistaken for an Egyptian. The Apostle Paul was a black man from the tribe of Benjamin. Understand that? Okay, keep reading. He was also of the dispersion. He was also of the dispersion, meaning what? His ministry was to what? To the scattered Israelite, the diaspora. Go ahead. From Tarsus and Cilicia. Mm hmm Possessing Roman citizenship. He was a Roman city. He had Roman citizenship, but he was a Jew by nationality. Go ahead. And fluent. If Angular, Greek, Paul became the major architect of Gentile Christianity. Because his, mis his ministry was to teach scattered Israelites who were living like Gentiles. That's what you need to understand. The Gentiles is not talking about all nations on earth. Mm -mm. He's talking about the northern kingdom of Israel who are living like Gentiles. That's all he's talking about. Okay. Understand that. Now, uh, go to page the Holy Land, page 102. No, no, no. The Holy Land, page 88. Page 88, the Holy Land. Go to the next book. The Holy Land, page 88. Okay. Some of these I'm going to jump now because I'm right now the time is gone. Okay, I, I have to I have to go. I have a lot to cover. Okay, read that. Stephen. Stephen, Stephen. Stephen, mm -hmm. accused of blasphemy by the Jews of Jerusalem. Watch this. Is stoned to death outside of the city walls in the 9th century Byzantine manuscript illustration at left. Paul. Mm -hmm. Come on, Paul at what? Paul at right with a halo. With a halo is a what? 
is a spectator. Look at the Apostle Paul. You see what the white man tried to do? The white man tried to remove his face completely. Look at him. The bottom right. That's him right there. That's the Apostle Paul. You see what the white man tried to do? He tried to remove his face completely. But that's the black man right there. That's the Apostle Paul. Okay? Now, the Holy Land, page 102. Actually, you know what? That's it right there. That's it. That's it. Take it off the screen. Take it off the screen. Okay? Take it off the screen. Now, give me the next book. Give me um, When We Ruled Russia. Okay? During the Dark Ages. Okay? Rulers of Russia. You're going to go to page... Page 20. Rulers of Russia. Okay. Page 20. Yes, sir. Ivan the Terrible. Our forefather. Okay. Because we ruled Russia in, during the Dark Ages. After Rome fell in 193 AD, we ruled Russia. Give me Malachi 1 and 4. We read that already. Give me Isaiah 2 verse 19. Yeah, Ivan the Terrible. Give me Isaiah 2 verse 19. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 2 verse 19. Watch this. Read. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks. I Meaning he's talking about the white man. He will go into the holes of the rocks. That's the Caucasus mountains of Georgia, Russia. Between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Come on. And into the caves of the earth. Into the caves of the earth. Read. For the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And for the glory of his majesty. You see that thing? Because we pushed them to the Caucasus mountains of Georgia, Russia, during the Dark Ages. When Rome fell in 183 AD, we, it, it, we entered into the time period called the Dark Ages. That's when we ruled. Give me Job 30 verse 5. Watch this. Come on. Job, Job chapter 30 verse 5. Read, read. The book of Job, chapter 30, verse 5. Read. They were driven forth from among men. The white people were driven forth from among men. Okay? We drove them off from among men. Read. They cried after them as after a thief. We were chasing them after as if we were chasing a thief because they are the thief of this earth. They are the thieves of the earth. Read. To dwell in the cliffs of the valleys. To dwell in the caves of the valleys, in the rocks, in the mountains. Read. In the caves of the earth mm -hmm. and in the rocks. Read. Among the bushes they prayed. They prayed among the bushes. Come on. Under the nettles they were gathered together. You see, that's where they, that's where they had a caucus. Read. They were children of fools. They are children of fools. God says, white people, they are children of fools. Read. Yea, children of base men. They are the worst race upon this earth. Go ahead. They were viler than the earth. They are worse than anything on earth. Read. And now am I their song? Now we become their song. Come on. Yea, I am their byway. Now we become their byway. That's what has happened now. You understand? Give me the twenty twenty verse thirty seven. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty eight, verse thirty seven. Read. And thou shalt become an astonishment, mm -hmm. a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. Because what the nations will do is they'll start to change our images in the Bible and in history books. Okay, Psalm 74 verse 4. Okay. So what, what, what I want you brothers to do is show the people the title of the book. Blow it up big so they can see. Number one. Two. Show me the picture of Ivan the Terrible. Number three, you're going to show me the writings about Ivan the Terrible. Okay, come on. Psalm 74 verse 4. Read. The book of Psalms chapter 74 verse 4. Read. Thy enemies roar in the midst of thy congregation. Our enemies roar in the midst of our congregation. That's why our people are filling up the Christian church. What are our enemies doing? They're painting the likeness of their images in our temples and all that. Read. They set up their insights for signs. They set up their images for signs now. 
When you ask what does God look like, they show you a white man. When you ask what does Moses look like, they show you a white man. When you ask them what the angels look like, they show you a white man. White naked baby, naked white babies. That's what they show you. That's not biblical. Go ahead. Read again verse 4. Chapter of Psalms, chapter 74, verse 4. Read. Thine enemies roar in the midst of thy congregation. Go ahead. They set up their insights for signs. They set up their, their images for signs. Come on. A man was famous according as he had lifted up eggs upon the fig tree. Read. But now they break down the carved work. Because you see what they did? When they came into our temples, when they robbed us, they took down our images and put up theirs. Read. But now they break down the carved work. Mm -hmm. The meaning our images that we set up. Read. Therefore, and once with axes and hammers, mm -hmm. they have cast fire into thy sanctuary. Meaning they even bent our temples to take to what? To destroy the evidence. Read. They have defiled by casting down the dwelling place of thy name to the ground. You see that thing? Meaning our images, our books, our, our ornaments, our precious things in the temples, they took them down, they stole them. That's why they have the riches they got. That's why they have the books they got. You understand? Now watch this. Give me, now give me the, the picture of Ivan the Terrible now. No, show the picture of the book first. Show the people the book. That's the book right there. Rulers of Russia. Okay? I'm going to show you who was ruling during the, time, during the dark ages in Russia. It wasn't white people. We just read in Isaiah that we drove them off from among men. They were dwelling in the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Show the picture of Ivan the Terrible, our forefather, who ruled during the time of Russia. That's him right there, a black man. You see, that's the warrior right there. That's the first Caesar, Ivan the Terrible. Look at him, a black man. He's black and beautiful. These are the pictures that they did not whitewash. Okay, but when you go to Google and say, Ivan the Terrible, a white man will pop up. You understand? Now show the excerpt of Ivan the Terrible. We're going to read about him. Okay, show the people what they need to see. I need, the, I need our people to see this thing. First Maccabees 348. Read that again. We read it earlier, but I want you to read it again. First, Come on. First book of Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. Read. And laid open the book of the law, uh -huh. wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. You see that thing? The heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images in our books. You understand? That's why they're deceiving the people from young and old. Our people believe that the greatest men and women that ever walked this earth, they are white. That's a lie. Now share the image now. Our forefather Ivan the Terrible. Show it. Share it. Share it. Come on. There's it right there. Read that. Ivan the Terrible. Mm -hmm. Cruelty, violence, and the sacred icon. Now I want you to blow up so that the people can see what we're reading from. Blow it up. Raise it up so the people can see it. Okay. Yeah, share that. Now read that. In 1554, mm -hmm. English explorers searching for a northern sea route to China. English explorers were searching for what? Remember, these are white people trying to conquer lands. Read. Searching for a northern sea route to China. Mm -hmm. Sailed into the sailed into the daunting waters of the Arctic, Arctic Ocean. Ocean and landed on the shore of a strange land. Now jump down. So let's see what they, when they arrived to the strange land, what did they find? Jump down. Shade. Read that. At last, they arrived at an immense city of wood. Read. Rude and without order. Mm -hmm. As the English captain, Richard Chancellor, described it, the Englishman had reached Moscow, the capital of Russia. You see that the Englishmen, these explorers, they reached Moscow. The capital of Russia. Watch this. Ruled by the mighty Caesar. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ruled by the what? Ruled by the mighty Caesar. It was ruled by the mighty Caesar. Come on. Ivan the, Ivan the Ninth. Mm -hmm. and, or Ivan the Terrible. Ivan the Ninth or Ivan the Terrible. Is that the ninth or the fourth? The that's the fourth. Apologies, sir. Okay, that's Ivan the Fourth. Ruled by the mighty Caesar, Ivan the Fourth or Ivan the Terrible. That's what he's called. So Moscow was ruled by the first Caesar, Ivan the Terrible, a black man. White people was not ruling during that time. Okay. Raise it up so they can see the bottom part now. Can you read that bottom part? Yeah. Shade. Read that. 
nothing had prepared the Englishman for the dazzling splendor. That's it on that. Read that. Read that. Read that. Read that part right there. Come on. A 16th century portrait of the first Caesar. Mm, the of the what? Of the first Caesar. A black man, Ivan the Terrible. Read. Ivan the Ivan the Fourth mm. or Ivan the Terrible captures the determination of a ruler who turned his country into a world power. You see that thing? Moscow was a world power. Who was ruling? Ivan the Terrible, a black man during the Dark Ages. This is your history, black man. Don't get it twisted. Do not be deceived. Okay, go to page one or two. Go to page one or two. No, 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 no. Rulers of Russia stay in the same book. Go to page 6. Yeah, I want that first page right there. Show them. Yeah, that's it right there. Go to page 6. Read them. Overleaf. The Archangel Michael. The Archangel Michael. Read. Leads Ivan the Terrible. The Archangel Michael is leading Ivan the Terrible. Go ahead. And his armies on a victory march on a victory march read in in this 16th century icon the scene celebrates ivan's conquest of a of a mongol city the this the scene celebrates ivan's conquest of a mongol city in 1552 okay i don't want that picture i want the next one now that we just read about read that except again the archangel the, the archangel other one angel michael Leads Ivan the Terrible no, and his no, armies no. on a victory march in, in this 60th, 16th century icon. The scene celebrates Ivan's conquest of a Mongol city in 1552. Now I want to I want to see our forefather Ivan the Terrible going to war to conquer the city of Mongol. Mongolia. That's the picture I'm looking at. I want that picture. Okay. I'm going to show you Ivan the Terrible during the Dark Ages when we led an army to go and conquer the city of Mongol in the 1500s. Okay, I want the people to see this because this is the history you will never learn in school nor will you learn it at the Christian church because they're going to teach you Jesus wept. That's the only thing you're going to learn from the Christian church that Jesus wept. Okay, that's all you're going to learn. Now I want the people to see I want the people to see the Archangel Michael leading Ivan the Terrible to war. No, no, no. The first picture that you just showed, I want them. I want the first one, then we're going to sit. They said the one that I'm seeing now, I'm going to sit after. Okay? Show the Archangel Michael. Raise it up. Yeah, that's it. Show the people. Come on. What you're looking at there, right there, that's the Archangel Michael at the center. You see him? And then that's Ivan the Terrible on the right right there. That's Ivan the Terrible. Look at Ivan the Terrible on a horse. Mark the Archangel Michael giving him the Holy Ghost to go and conquer the city of Mongol in 1552. That's a glorious thing right there. Look at it. Look at Ivan the Terrible on a horse. Look at the Archangel Michael giving him the Holy Ghost to go and conquer. Now give me the next picture. Come on. I want the next picture now. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Shade. Now what you're seeing there, that's Ivan the Terrible on a horse with an army. Look at the army of the Lord right there. Look at our forefathers on horses in battle array going to war. You understand? Ivan the Terrible being given the, the go ahead, the green light to go and conquer the city of Mongol. Now raise the picture up. I want them to see the army at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, that's it right there. Shake. I want the people to see that. Look at the army right there at the bottom. Ready for war. That's a beautiful thing right there. Our forefathers, the angels, the, or the most High always sent the angels to back us up when we went to war. So the same thing that the Lord did back then with Ivan the Terrible, he's doing with us, brothers, when we go to the street corners and teach. The angels are with us to give us the Holy Ghost to go and conquer. That's what I want you to see. I want you to understand that, brothers. Okay? Now, give, go to page... Okay, that's it on that. Now, give me the, when we rule France. Go to the book when we rule France. Go to page 10. I 
our forefather Charlemagne during the time of France, when we ruled France, okay? Because we ruled France, brothers. France, we ruled over that city. Understand that, okay? Go back to Isaiah 2, verse 19. You see, what you're looking at there is the French kings, okay? What you're seeing right there, that's Charlemagne. Because you might be wondering, that's a white man right there. Now I want you to zoom the picture in. I want the people to see what the white man tried to do to whitewash this image right here. Okay? Zoom it in. Zoom in some more. Yeah, zoom it in. No, no, no. Raise it down. I want, yeah, I want the picture people to see that part right there. Now zoom in. Zoom some more a little. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Now sh share it with the people. Now what you're looking at right there, that's the picture of Charlemagne. But what you notice is that look at the headline. You see what the white man was trying to do? The white man was whitewashing the image of Charlemagne, a black man, during the time of France. Look at the nose. He still have those black spots, letting you know they were whitewashing this image. Look at the eyes. Look at the eye sockets. They still have black paint in it, showing you that was a black man right there. Now, I want you to raise the picture up now. You give me first Maccabees 348. Raise up the picture. Raise it up. I want the people to see this. This is the most important issue. That's it. Stop right there. Now, Shay, look at the neck. Look at what the white man was trying to do. Look at the, what do they call it? It is Adam's apples. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Look at the throat. Look at him. You see, the white man was trying to whitewash this image. He tried, but he missed some spots. Look at the side of his neck also. You see that the white man was trying to whitewash the image. This image right here, this is a black image. The white man was whitewashing it. Now raise it up. I want to show you on Charlemagne's garment. On Charlemagne's garment, you're going to see the picture of himself. Now zoom that in. Zoom it in. Yeah, zoom that in. Yeah. Okay, now share it with the people online. Right there. You see that thing, that center, that, that black thing it looks like a, a knob on the center. That's the picture of Charlemagne, actually. Look at him. Pitch black. Pitch black. First Maccabees 348. First book of Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. Come on. And they laid open the book of the law. Read. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their image. You see what that thing? That what you just saw is what the white men tried to do to whitewash our images. But the Lord says, I'm going to make them to make mistakes when they whitewash our images so our people can see what the white man was trying to do, this devil white man that he is. Now read that. I want, I want the people now to see the writing on Charlemagne. Watch this. I want the people to see this thing. Show the people there. Okay? I want the people, we're still, we're looking at the book called Friend, the Kings of what? Of France, right? The Kings of France. Charlemagne. Okay? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. That's not the one. Okay, first Maccabees 348 again. First book of Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. Go ahead. And they laid open the book of the law. They laid open the book of the law. The book of the law is the Holy Bible. Go ahead. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their image. Where the white man has sought to paint the likeness of his images in our book. Yeah, that's him. That's Shalomin right there. Right there. Okay, but yeah, that's it. Start there first. Okay, that's Charlemagne. That's from the book, The Kings of France. Now read that. Come on. Be Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Yeah, that's it. That's what I want. Read that. The Royal Road to Splendor. The Royal Road to Splendor. This is Charlemagne. Now blow it up big when it says before France existed. Blow, up, blow that up big. Blow it up. I want the people to see that thing. Okay. Yep. Okay, share it with the people. Come on, now read that. Before France existed, mm -hmm. there was a king of France. Read. He was not strictly speaking a French king. Read. He spoke no French for in 742. In 742 AD. Go ahead. The white man wasn't ruling during that time. We was ruling France. Go ahead. When he was born, mm. the language did not yet exist. The language of France did not even exist during that time. Go ahead. 
a brilliant king. A brilliant king. Charlemagne was a brilliant king. Go ahead. And an art patron. And a what? And an art patron. That one he must he was what? He, he mastered art. He understood art. But watch what they say about him. The white man always insulting, throwing things in there. Go ahead. He never learned to read or write. How the hell can you be an art patron but you don't know how to read and write? What the hell is this? The white man is the devil the Bible speaks of. Now, read the next highlighted part. Read that. Come on. But the French remember him as Charlemagne. Mm -hmm. He was to become more powerful. He was to become more powerful as a legend than he had been as a man. That's some heavy stuff right there. He says he was more powerful as a legend than when he was a man. Go ahead. He performed the same service for his countrymen. For his meaning, Charlemagne was about his nation. Not Charlemagne the God. Mm -mm, not that one. Charlemagne, the king of France, our forefather. Go ahead. That the legendary King Arthur mm -hmm. performed for the British. By the way, legend, King Arthur was a black man, by the way. The legendary King Arthur performed, meaning the legendary King Arthur, he was also about his nation to the British. Not the, the British of the white people you see today. Because mm -mm. we ruled Britain. We ruled Britain, England. Okay, read. He somehow made himself the source of a lasting sense of nationhood. Nationhood. He was about the nation. Meaning what? He was a nationalist. Charlemagne was a nationalist. Go ahead. His treasures, his relics, mm. and the stories of his exploits have become the heart of France. Even unto this day. Even unto this very day. Now raise up the raise, raise it up. Okay. Now read that share that highlighted part. I want the people to see that. Read it. Charlemagne, enthroned in the detail opposite from a 14th century scepter, ruled an empire extending from the North Sea to the Mediterranean. You see that? From the North Sea to the Mediterranean Sea, Charlemagne was ruling over there. Understand that? This is in 742 AD. Because Charlemagne died in 800, 814 AD. 800, he became the... He was what? He was over the Holy Roman Empire in 800 AD. You understand? Okay. Now, give me the next page. Okay. No, no, no. no. Give me the other one. I want page 14. Okay. We're going to read page 14 and 15. Okay. Yeah, that's it right there. Yeah, that's the one I want. Yeah, start there. That's one. Start there first. Okay, let's share it. I want the people to see it. Okay. I want the people to see this thing. Because after this, I'm going to go into some scary stuff. Okay, pay close attention. Okay. I have not touched the scary stuff yet. I'm just showing you the history. Okay, and it is, it is some scary stuff. Okay, watch this. Okay, you have it? Yep. Share it. Now I want you to read that. We are reading from the rulers of France, okay? The next page is that one. Come on, read that. A Song of Heroes. Uh-huh. In 778, Charlemagne, ever protective of his Christian subjects. It's Christian subject because guess what? They were still pushing the teachings of Christ, but they started to mix it with what? They started to mix it with paganism. Because from 325 AD... Emperor Constantine, he pushed that. Read. Mastered an enormous cavalry mm. to invade northern Spain. You see that? So, Charlemagne went to invade Spain. Go ahead. Where Arabs had established where Arabs had established a powerful caliphate. The, the caliphate, caliphate. Caliphate, the western outpost of the Muslim world. Because guess what? The Arabs were also what? Were indoctrinating our people with what? With Islam. Because remember, this is 742 AD. Islam, the birth of Islam was 622 AD. It's not far apart. Go ahead. The mission led by Roland, mm. Charlemagne's most trusted count. The meaning... Charlemagne's captain. Go ahead. Emerged 
as one of the great legends of the Middle Ages. That's some heavy stuff right there, man. This is beautiful history, man. Read on. The Song of Roland, a glorious 11th century poem. 11th century. We were ruling during that time. Go ahead. The song in turn gave rise, gave rise to other works of art, mm. including the Charlemagne's widow, window. In the, the Charlemagne's what? Including the Charlemagne's window. The Charlemagne's window. We're going to see Charlemagne's window. Pay attention. Go ahead. In detail and right. Uh -huh. At right. We're going to see the Charlemagne's window in a few seconds. Go ahead. In Chartered Cadrell, the epic of Roland that so stirred the French became in time the national epic of the French. Mm. The poem which many poets composed. Raise it up. The poem, uh -huh. which many poets composed, takes what was actually a minor skirmish and turns it into a holy hero-making crusade. Go ahead. Not written down until over 200 years after the event it describes. Mm. The poem cast Charlemagne as Superman. You see that thing? It says it cast Charlemagne as Superman. Read. And saints. And Roland, he was Superman and he was a saint, meaning he was a warrior and he was a saint. He was doing things that were supernatural to behold. Go ahead, at war. Read. And Roland, as his headstrong but virtuous servant. Now watch this. Now read the. Now share the next picture. Share the next. Uh, the next image. Now we're gonna look at Charlemagne's window. What does Charlemagne's window look like? What is it? What is it composed of? Charlemagne's window. Let's look at it. You understand? Come on, come on, brothers. Come on. Charlemagne's window. I'm going to show you something about Charlemagne's window. Because the white man tried to whitewash our images during the time of when we ruled France. Okay? Now, we're gonna, I'm gonna, I, want to, I want the people to see the highlighted part, including Charlemagne's window. Okay? Yep. Read the green part now. Read that. Roland, pictured twice in the stained glass and right, mm -hmm. stands above his slain comrades. After striking his sword on a rock to render it useless, mm. he sounds. <laughs> Keep reading, man. <laughs> he sounds his horn to call back the Frankish troops. He says he sounds his horn because the Frankish troops, that's talk about Israelites in France. You understand? So when he says blow the horn was to prepare the troops for war. Read. The hand of the arch Gabriel. The hand of the archangel Gabriel. Go ahead. The hand of the archangel Gabriel mm -hmm. above the hallowed portrait of Roland guide the hero to heaven. You see that thing? Now show the, the, the Charlemagne's window. Show the people Charlemagne's window. Look at it. Look at the black man right there on the right. The white man was the white man was so evil that he even whitewashed the helmet. You see, you see Roland striking the, the, the sword on the on the rock. You see him? He even whitewashed the helmet of Roland. Charlemagne's captain. Look at Charlemagne on the right. Black man. Look at him. You understand? Now look at the other picture, because they say in the same page. Now show the people the other picture right there. That's right there. That's still Charlemagne's window. Look at black men over there with swords. You understand? In battle array. Going to war. Look at it. That's some beautiful stuff right there. So, that's it on that. That's it on that. Now, there's going to be a lot of reading. Go to page 25. I think there's something else I want to go to. Yeah, read page 25. I'm going to show you when, um, I'm going to show you Charlemagne and his two bishops on each, either side of him. Black man, you understand? Gloriously apparelled. Hmm? Black man gloriously apparelled. Watch this. I want you to see this thing. Ah, that's some beautiful stuff right there, man. Black man looking glorious. Look at them. Mm. Oh, yeah, the people on I don't see it yet. Apologies, apologies. Now, Shane. Look at that. Look at that. 
Look at Charlemagne in the middle. Beautiful. Wearing a glorious apparel. Look at the two bishops on either side of him. That's Charlemagne right there. A black man. Okay. Look at him. Ah, this is beautiful, man. When we were in our glory. I mean, this is during the dark ages. Yes, we look glorious, but we was evil as hell. You understand? We were not keeping the commandments. Yes, at the beginning we, we did, but towards the end we stopped doing that. Okay? Until the Lord moved the spirit of King James to translate the Bible from Hebrew to Greek to English in preparation for us to go into captivity so we can read the Bible in the language of our captivity. You understand? Okay, that's it on that. Now, give me the book of Acts now, chapter 8 and 1. Matthew 24 verse 9. Going to be a lot of reading now. Okay? I went over the history to show you our forefathers and all that. Give me Matthew 24 verse 9. A lot of reading now. Okay? Pay close attention. Take notes. Take notes. Okay? Now I'm getting deeper into the class now. Maradon. And faith, faith and faint. Maradon. Faith and faint. Matthew 24 verse 9. Watch this. Can go Matthew chapter 24 verse 9. Come on. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Let's talk about our people. You understand? Our people that hate this truth. Our people in the congregation that don't believe this truth. They're just here. Read. And shall kill you. They shall what? And shall kill you. And they're going to put you to death for believing this truth. So teaching the gospel of Christ. Go ahead. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. We're going to be hated of all nations, brothers. You must understand, in this truth, we are going to be hated. And we are hated already. The same way they hated our Lord and Savior Christ, they hate our gas too. Go ahead. And then shall many be offended. Many are going to be offended because the apostles, the, the prophets that the Lord will raise up in the last days, we're going to teach the gospel and it's going to cut the people to the heart. And the people are going to be offended. They're going to want to put us to death. And they will, some of us. Go ahead. And shall betray one another. And that's where the betrayal comes in. Because of what? The truth being taught. Read. And shall hate one another. And they're going to hate one another. Read. And many false prophets shall rise. Many false prophets that shall rise. is talk about all these other religions of the world that have nothing to do with the Bible. Go ahead. And shall deceive many. They shall deceive many of our people that I want have not repented. Come on. And because iniquity shall abound. Because of sin. Sin is will abound. Read. The love of many shall wax cold. You see that the love of many of the, our people in the truth and without, they are going to wax cold. Read. But he that shall endure unto the end. But he that shall endure unto the end. Read. The same shall be saved. We, if we endure. We must endure unto the end. We're going to get delivered. Give me Acts 8 and 1 now. Watch this. Acts chapter 8 verse 1. Now, this right here. Give me that in Acts chapter 13 verse 22 first. Acts 13 verse 22. What I'm showing you here is, brothers, understand why you're here. I need you to pay close attention now. The reason why this is going to be a defining moment for you to understand why you're here. And the, why, are you here for the right reasons or for the wrong reasons? Or you are here because being an Israelite is cool. It's not cool to be an Israelite. Being an Israelite requires a heavy responsibility. Read. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 22. Watch this. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto him. No, unto no, no, no. Is that what I want? No, Acts 14. Acts 14, 22. The book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 22. Go ahead. Confirming the souls of the disciples. Confirming the souls of the disciples. That's what we're doing right now. We're confirming the souls of the disciples. That's why we that's why we teach the way we do. Read. And exhorting them to continue in the faith. To continue in the faith because then you are, are ye my disciples indeed. Go ahead. And that we must through much tribulation. That we must through much tribulation do what? Enter into the kingdom of God. Because this is not going to be handed over or it's not going to be handed to us. Getting the kingdom, brothers, will not be handed to us. Getting eternal life is not for free. Eternal life will not be given to you on a silver platter. Eternal life, you're going to get it through death for many of us. Understand that it's not for free. We're going to, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Understand that. Now give me X18 1. Watch this. The book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 1. Read. And Saul was consenting unto his death. When he was caught? 
And Saul was consenting unto his death. Saul is the apostle Paul. Give me Acts 18 and 9 real quick. Saul is the apostle Paul. Okay. Read then. The book of Acts chapter 18 verse 9. Read. Then Saul, who also is called Paul. And Saul, who also is called what? Who also is called Paul. Who also is called Paul. Go back to Acts 8 and 1 now. The book of Acts chapter 8 verse 1. Read. And Saul mm -hmm. was consenting unto his death. Read. He was consenting unto the death of Stephen. Okay, read. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church. You see that thing? There was a great persecution against the church. Much tribulation against the church. Meaning Israelites that keep God's commandments. Read. Which was in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea. What verse you in? Verse 1. Verse 1. Sir. Go ahead. The book of Acts chapter 8 verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church. Great persecution against the church. Because the same thing that happened here during the time of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, is going to happen today. I hope you understand that. You must be ready. We must prepare ourselves. We must fast. That's why now we're doing three times a week. You understand? Three days a week. That's the, that's the preparation for the great persecution that will come upon us. Every week, three days a week, we fast. Right? Go ahead. Which was in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea mm -hmm. and Samaria. Go ahead. Except the apostles. We're going to explain that in a second what it means when it said except the apostles. But they were consenting unto Stephen's death. The apostle Paul was one of them. Watch this. Give me Acts 6 and 1. Acts chapter 6 and 1. Let's get the bit of a history of our forefather Stephen. Okay. Because this was the beginning of the great persecution of the church. When our forefathers now were being put to death for what? For the gospel. I need to understand what's coming, brothers. We need to prepare. Shaking and jiving them days are over. Read what you got. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 6 verse 1. Read. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, Read. there arose a memory of the Christians against the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. You see that the widows were neglected by the Hebrews of the Greeks, meaning what? Israelite that grew up in the Greek customs. Read. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them mm -hmm. and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God. He says, It's not good that we should leave the word of God and do what? And serve tables. And serve tables. Go ahead. Wherefore, brethren, mm -hmm. look ye out among you seven men Read. of honest report. He says, choose seven men of honest report to do this business. Go ahead. Full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Spirit of the Lord. Read. And wisdom, mm. whom we may appoint over this business. You okay, go ahead. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer mm. and to the ministry of the way. You see that thing? Prayer is important, brothers. He says, the way they gave themselves continually to prayer and to the ministering of the word. That's the job. Go ahead. And the same pleased the whole multitude. Mm. And they chose Stephen. They chose who? And they chose Stephen. So Stephen was one of the seven. Go ahead. A man full of faith. Stephen was a man that was full of faith. Read. And of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And Philip. And Prochorus. And Nicaen. Remember that name Philip right there. This Philip is not the Philip that you read about in John chapter 14. This is not the Philip. This is the Philip that was among the seven that was chosen by the apostles. Read. And Nicana, mm. and Timon, and pa Pymenus. Pymenus, go ahead. And Nicholas, mm. a proselyte of Antioch. Okay, proselyte means is Israelite that converted back to the laws of Moses. Okay, that's what a proselyte is. They were living, they were following Greek customs, and they converted back to the laws of Moses. So they didn't know about Christ yet. You understand? Read. Whom they said before the apostle, mm -hmm. and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. What verse you in? Verse 6. Sir. Okay, come on. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. Read. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, mm. did great wonders and miracles among the people. So Stephen was a great forefather, he was a mighty prophet. Go ahead. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, mm. which is called the synagogue of the Libertines. Libertines. Go ahead. 
and Cyrenians, mm. and Alexandrians, mm. and of them of Cilicia, right? and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. They were arguing with Stephen regarding the word of God because they were being cut to the heart. Go ahead. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. They could not resist what he taught. Whatever they asked the question, whatever they went over there to rebuttal, he just brought a precept to shut it down. Go ahead. Then they support, support men mm. which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses. You see what he's saying? Because when we teach the laws of God, he says we're speaking blasphemous words against Moses. How do they say it? The, Lord of, the, the laws of God are done away with. That's how they say it. Read. And against God. Against God. Come on. And they stirred up the people. They did what? And they stirred up the people. Meaning they rally up the people against Stephen. The same thing that they did when we were in Sharpville, when they stirred the people against us, that's the same thing that we're reading about here. Go ahead. And the elders and the scribes mm. and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. Read. And set up false witnesses which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place. You see that they are, now they are slandering him. He was teaching the word of God from the beginning and continuously, they, because they could not resist the wisdom by which he spake, they said, now we have to accuse him. Now we have to slander him. Now we have to speak evil of the man. Read. And the law, for we have heard him say mm. that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place. You see that? Because, but Christ said, listen, on the third day I'm going to rise again. When he says this temple was talking about himself, first and foremost. Go ahead. And shall change the customs which Moses delivered. You us. see that? He says, no, he's going to change the laws which Moses delivered unto us. Christ didn't do any of that. Read. And all that sat in the council, mm. looking steadfastly on him, mm. meaning at Stephen, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Because Stephen was on another level. He had wisdom. And when they looked at him, they could not resist the wisdom, the wisdom by which he spake. You understand? He was in the full spirit. Now watch this. Give me Acts 7.51 now. Acts 7.51. Okay. Watch this. Remember, Stephen is cutting them to the heart now. He's going through the history from the time of Moses, even unto the time when they, the time they were living in. But watch this. Acts 7.51. The book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 51. Read. He is stiff-necked and mm. uncircumcised in heart and ears. You see what he's telling them? He says you are stiff-necked and you are uncircumcised in heart, meaning in your mind and in your ears. Read. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. You always resist the Holy Ghost, which is the laws of God. Come on. As your fathers did, so do ye. As our fathers did in the wilderness, he says we are doing the same thing this day. 2023, our people are still doing the same thing that our forefathers did in the wilderness. Go ahead. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? Mm -hmm. we said, he's asking, which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? Because your forefathers prophesied, pro persecuted many of the prophets that came. Jeremiah was one of them, as an example. Go ahead. And they have slain them, which showed before of the coming of the just one. You killed the prophets that taught about Christ. Read. Really? Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. You become betrayers and murderers. Go ahead. Who have received the law. Because you received the law at the mouth of the prophets. Read. By the disposition of angels mm -hmm. and have not kept. It. They did not keep the Holy Ghost, which is God's laws. They hated God's commandments. The same way our people hated God's laws back then, they are still hating God's laws today. Our people love it when we go over history and all that, but a minute you touch on the laws of God, now we're going to fight because now you're invading my personal space. That's the mindset of our people. The reason why we're in captivity today is because we hate law and order. That's the reason why. Okay? Now, keep reading. But, but he... Being full of the Holy Ghost. But Stephen, what, when what, being full of the Holy Ghost, go ahead. Looked up steadfastly into heaven mm -hmm. and saw the glory of God. He saw the most High God. Read. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. You see that God and the most High God and Christ are not the same person. Like they teach in the Christian church. Read. And said, behold. I see the heavens open mm. and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. He saw Christ sitting on the right hand of his Father. Go ahead. 
Then they cried out with a loud voice mm. and stopped their ears. They did what? And stopped their ears. They stopped their ears, read. And ran upon him with one accord. Mm. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. They did what? And cast him out of the city and stoned him. They stoned Stephen. Why? Because they were cut to the heart. Because the word of God is a weapon. Give me that in um, Hebrews 4 verse 12. The word of God is, a, is the, the most powerful weapon on earth is the Holy Bible. That's what you need to understand. That's why they were cut to the heart. Meaning what? They were offended. That's the reason why they went as far as to stone our forefather Stephen. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4 verse 12. Read. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Is quick and powerful. Come on. And sharper than any two-edged sword. You see that? And sharper than any two-edged sword. Read. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit mm. and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You see that thing? Because Stephen was able to get to their hearts, the intents of their heart. That's why he was able to do what he did. And that's why they did what they did to him because he cut them to the heart with the word of God. Understand it. Okay, go back to Acts 7. Acts chapter 7, read verse 57. The book of Acts chapter 7 verse 57. Watch this. Then they cried out with a loud voice mm. and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. They ran upon Stephen with one accord. Go ahead. And cast him out of the city. They threw him out of the city. Read. And stoned him. And what? And stoned him. They stoned our forefather Stephen. Come on. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Paul. The apostle Paul. Because he consented unto Stephen's death. Read. And they stoned Stephen. They did what? And they stoned Stephen. Go ahead. Calling upon God. You see that they were doing? While they were, while they were stoning our forefather Stephen, they were calling on the name of the Lord. You cannot make this up. Mm. Give me John 16 and 1. John chapter 16 verse 1. Watch this. 1 and 2. Watch this. The book of John, chapter 16, verse 1. Go ahead. These things have I spoken unto you. This is Christ speaking. Watch this. Read. That ye should not be offended. That he says, don't be offended. Go ahead. They shall put you out of the synagogue. They're going to put you out of the synagogue. That's what they did to Stephen. Read. Yea, the time cometh mm. that whosoever killeth you. Whosoever what? That whosoever killeth you. Whosoever put you to death, what's going to happen? Will think that it doeth God's service. You see that thing? They're going to think that they are doing God's service. That's what we're reading here. Go back to Acts 7. You men, I need you men to understand what you're in for. This is not Sunday school. Understand that. Okay? Acts chapter 7, read verse 59. The book of Acts chapter 7 verse 59. Read. And they stoned Stephen, mm -hmm. calling upon God. That's what we just read. That's what Christ, that's why Christ first in verse 1 he says, don't be offended by this. Because this is going to take place. And when they do it, they're going to think that they're doing God's service. Read. And say, mm. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Because why? Our forefather Stephen was giving up the ghost. Go ahead. And he kneeled down mm. and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Mm. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Meaning he died. Watch this. Give me the book now. The Holy Land. Page 87. Go to the book, The Holy Land, in page 87. I'm going to show you something here. Pay close attention, okay? I need you men to be on point. Come on, come on. The Holy Land, page 87. What you need to understand is that this is not Sunday school. The stuff that happened to our forefathers, what we just read with our forefather Stephen, that's what's going to happen to us. I hope you understand what's coming. Okay. Okay, read that. Read him from what book? Read him from the Holy Land. Page 87. Page 87. Come on. Saul was one of, of, of several pupils who sat at the rabbi's feet. At the rabbi's feet. The rabbi here is Gamaliel because the apostle Paul learned at the feet of Gamaliel. Go ahead. Listening to complex discussions. Mm about the application of the law mm, some heavy stuff go ahead short and dark haired 
He, oh, 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 the apostle Paul was what? <laughs> short. And, he was short and what? And dark hair. And dark hair. Go ahead. With glowing eyes mm. and and an intense manner. And intense. He was intense. Go ahead. Saul was an opinionated student. You mean he had a big mouth. Okay. Now scroll up. Raise it up and blow it up. Raise it up and blow it up so the people can see it. Okay, shade, read that. Saul, however, mm -hmm. was not as tolerant as his teacher. Meaning Gamaliel, read. When an outraged Jerusalem mob sees the Nazarene Stephen. Mm -hmm. The Nazarene Stephen, because remember, that's the mob that attacked our forefather Stephen. Read. Who was harshly berating the crowd for disregarding Jesus. You see that? Because he says he was, they said he was disregarding Christ. Go ahead. And stoned, and stoned him to death. They stoned our forefather Stephen to death. That's what we just read in Acts. Read. Saul stood by. Sto out the Saul, who later was called Paul. Go ahead. Encouraging the murder. Mm. It was the first incident in a general persecution. You see that? It says it was the first incident in a general persecution. Meaning what? By the community. Mm. Guess where we're going? Keep reading. And many of Jesus' followers fled from Jerusalem. Many of the apostles that followed Christ, they fled from Jerusalem, come on. To Damascus for refuge. You see that? To hide. That's what we're reading here. Go ahead. Saul, breathing threats and murder mm. against the disciples. Go ahead. As, re as recorded in the Acts of the Apostles. We're going to read that next in Acts 9. Go ahead. Went to the high priest and asked for letters to the synagogues of Damascus. Mm. He was the he went, he went to the high priest to get the letters, meaning permission to go and to go after the followers of Christ, to put them to death. Go ahead and to imprison some of them. Read. He was determined to stamp out the sect. He was determined to stamp out the sect, meaning to destroy it. Read. If he found any. Nazarenes trying to make convict among the Jews. You see that if he found, meaning he found people like us trying to convert the people to what? To the laws of God. What did he do? He would ask the, Damas the Damascus author. The Damascus authority. He would ask the Damascus authority. Now read the, the, next, the next page. Come on, brothers. So the apostle Paul when he realized that the people now had fled after Stephen was persecuted, guess what? They fled to Damascus, Syria. So guess what? He followed them over there. You understand? Now read that. Show the people, come on. Now read that. To let him bring the troublemakers back to Stop right there. What were they called? To let him bring back the troublemakers back to jerusalem so guess what we are called troublemakers brothers we are called troublemakers that because we troublemakers you understand we're causing trouble we're turning the people upside down he says these have come here that they turn the world upside down that's what we're doing wherever we go to teach the people say we troublemakers go ahead to let him bring the troublemakers back to jerusalem read as prisoners mm, as what as prisoners to put us into prison read the high priest gave Saul the authority you see that the high priest gave the apostle Paul the authority to do that to us go ahead to go to go to Damascus to suppress the new cult you see that thing because we were called a cult and what we call today we are called a cult we are a hate group go ahead with two champions he set out for the land beyond the Sea of Galilee, mm -hmm. crossing the high and crossing the high and arid plain that led to the great Syrian city. Right. As he was proceeding upon the road, mm. an, an, an astonishing thing occurred. Okay, stop right there. We're gonna deal with the astonishing thing. Now give me go back to Acts 8 and 1 now. Acts chapter 8, verse 1. The book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 1. Read. And Saul was consenting unto his death. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church. There was a great persecution against the church. Stephen was one of them. Go ahead. Which was at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. 
and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea mm. and Samaria, except the apostles. When he says except the apostles, I need you men to pay attention. He says except the apostles, because this is very important for you to know. He says the people were scattered abroad except the apostles. The question is why? Give me the book of Acts 1, verse 1. Acts 1 and 1. He says the people were scattered abroad except the apostles was not scattered. Why? When there was a persecution of the church, the apostles, they didn't scatter. They didn't leave Jerusalem. Read that. Acts 1 and 1. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 1. Go ahead. The former treaties that I made, mm -hmm. or Theophilus. Theophilus was a government official. Read. Of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Read. Until the day in which he was taken up. Meaning he was taken up, went to, the, to, to the heavens where the Lord is. Go ahead. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles. You see that he gave commandment to the apostles. What was the command? Come on. Whom he had chosen, mm -hmm. to whom also he showed himself alive. Read. After he, many infallible proofs. Keep, to, keep reading. To whom also he showed himself alive, after his passion by many infallible proofs. Read. Being seen of them for today, uh -huh. and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Go ahead. And being assembled together with them, Meaning Christ was sitting with the disciples, the apostles, read. Commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. They should not what? That they should not depart from Jerusalem. That they must not depart from Jerusalem. Go ahead. But wait for the promise of the Father, mm -hmm. which said he, ye he have heard of me. He said, he says, but wait for the promise of the Father. What is that promise? Give me Luke 24 verse 49. Watch this. Luke 24 verse 49. He says, but they must wait for the promise of the Father. Okay, come on. The book of Luke chapter 24 verse 49. Read. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Mm -hmm. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured, endured with the power of, from, from on high. The power from on high is the power of the Holy Ghost. Now give me Acts 1 and 8. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Read. But ye shall receive power. Ye shall what? But ye shall receive power. That's the promise of the Father. But ye shall receive power. Come on. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You see that thing? So that's why they had the power to heal and raise the dead. That's the promise of the Father. It says wait from the power from on high. That's what he's talking about. Give me John 7.39. Because during the time when they were during the time of John, he had not yet given them that power yet. Okay, read that. The book of John, chapter seven, verse thirty-nine. Read. But this spake he of the Spirit, mm -hmm. which they that believe on him shall receive. The Spirit which they should receive. Go ahead. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Because he was not yet glorified, meaning he had not yet died and resurrected. You understand? And went back to the Father so that he can leave them with a the comforter. You understand? To receive power so they can heal the people. Okay? Now give me um, Bible World. Okay? Page 147. Page 147. Read that. Page 147. Show the people the book. Bible World. Page 147. Watch this. What we just read, we're going to read the account of it in the book. Okay. Share it with the people. I want Solonia. I need you to read that. Yes, sir. Okay, read that. The first missionaries. Mm -hmm. On that hazy spring morning, mm -hmm. when the risen Lord met and ate with his disciples by the lakeside in Galilee. That's Christ. Go ahead. He gave them very specific instruction. You see that? He gave them very specific instruction, what we just read in Acts 1 and 1 down. Go ahead. They were to return to Jerusalem mm. and remain there. And what? And remain there. And remain there. That's why when the persecution arose about Stephen, the apostles remained in Jerusalem. Go ahead. Until they had received power mm. by having the Holy Spirit bestowed upon them. You see that thing? Go ahead. They were to be witnesses to their departed master. Mm. Not only in the holy city itself. Not, not only in Jerusalem. Go ahead. But where? But throughout Judea. But throughout Judea. And Samaria. And Samaria, Northern Kingdom. And to the very ends of the earth. Stop right there. Why do you think we're in the diaspora? <laughs> Why do you think we're over here? 
Why do you think we came to this side of the earth and not Babylon? There's a reason for that. So that we can teach the gospel to the people that are scattered abroad over here in the diaspora. So don't think it was a mistake that we we're born on this side of the earth. No, it's not a mistake. It's God's purpose for you to be on this side of the earth to teach the gospel on this side. Understand that. Okay, go ahead. Immediately following this, mm. the church began to take visible form. Read. Obeying the instructions which Jesus had, had so carefully sent. Read. The apostles spent their earliest efforts in carrying the gospel to the Jews of Jerusalem. To the Jews of Jerusalem because at first we taught none other to the Jews only in Jerusalem. Go ahead. And the rest of Judea, mm. Peter and John went to the temple and preached in the courtyard while the other apostles and certain disciples whom they had appointed as missionaries preached. So, guess what? The apostle Peter and them, they focus to teach the gospel here in Jerusalem with John and the rest of the apostles. Because what? They were waiting for the promise from the on high. Once they got it, it was time for them to go out now and teach. Likewise, this day, you being breathed upon you the Holy Ghost. Not that power, but the understanding of the scriptures so you can go out and teach. It's the same thing. I'm telling you, we're going to run the curses with the word of God. I'm telling you right now, that's the mission. We're going to run the block. No longer going to see no drug dealers. The drug dealers, when they see us, they'll move. I'm telling you, that's what's coming. We're not going to be intimidated by no drug dealer, no pimp, no nothing. Whether with a gun or with a knife, whatever it is they come against us, the Lord is with us. Understand that. Faith and faith. Understand that thing. That's what's coming. I need you men to be well prepared. Okay? Now, go back to Acts. Acts chapter 8. Read verse 2 now. Acts 8 verse 2. Watch this. Then we go Acts chapter 8 verse 2. Go ahead. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial mm. and made great lamentations over him. Okay, now this is Stephen's burial. They buried our forefather Stephen. Come on. As for Saul, mm. he made a havoc of the church. He did what? He made a havoc of the church. Now, read verse 2 again. The book of Acts chapter 8 verse 2. Read. And devout men mm. carried Stephen to his burial. Devout men meaning what? They were devoted to the laws of God. Those devout men, Philip was one of them. Those seven. Okay, read again. The book of Acts, chapter 8, verse, verse 2. Read. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial mm. and made great lamentation over him. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Now watch this. Give me Acts, chapter 22, verse 20. Pay close attention here. Now get the link. Those definitions that I sent you, that's what I want now. Okay. Read that. Acts 22, verse 20. The book of Acts, chapter 22, verse 20. Watch this. And when the blood of the mat the Mara. When, when the blood of the Mara Stephen was shed. No, when the blood of the Mara Stephen was shed. Go ahead. I also was standing by. This is the Apostle Paul speaking now. This is his testimony to the council. Go ahead. And consenting unto his death. Mm -hmm. And kept the raiment of them that slew him. You see that thing? He even kept the raiment of the people that slew him. The apostle Paul was standing right there. You understand? Consenting unto his death. But what are they calling Stephen? Read that again. Verse 20. The book of Acts chapter 22 verse 20. Read. And when the blood of the, ma the when the blood of the martyr Stephen was shed. Read, sir. The book of Acts chapter 22 verse 20. Read. And when the blood of the martyr Stephen was shed. Mm. I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. Now get the definition of maradon. Read that. The definition of maradon. Okay. Read it. Definition of maradon. Mm -hmm. The death or suffering of a, of a martyr. Of a martyr. Now read, click it. Now click the definition of martyr. Read, click that. Yeah, read that. Let's see what a mara is. Read it. Definition of mara. Mm -hmm. A person who is killed because of their religious or other belief. You see that thing? Read again. Read again. Definition of mara. Mm -hmm. A person who is killed. A person who is what? 
a person who is killed a person who is killed go ahead because of their religious or other beliefs now jump down to the next definition not the one the one that says kill that definition right there then mm -hmm. kill someone because of their belief you see that thing so i'm showing you your faith is going to be text tested all our faith is going to be tested and guess what some of us will have to prove our faith through death you see this is this 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 mission right here this is not the christian church i've been telling you this is not the christian church you better understand what you're in for now go back to the definition of martyrdom okay yeah read that definition of martyrdom mm -hmm. the death or suffering of a man now read the similar words the synonyms now similar mm -hmm. death death read suffering suffering torture what torture what torture go ahead torment uh-huh agony agony persecution what persecution we just read persecution go ahead ordeal mm -hmm. anguish go ahead killing what killing killing come on putting to death putting to death read Mar marathization uh-huh sacrifice say what sacrifice that's it right there sacrifice go ahead crucifixion crucifixion i want you to keep those words in mind sacrifice crucifixion but keep reading the synonyms immolation mm -hmm. burning what burning burning at the stake go ahead burning at the stake that's it right there read auto defe auto defe go ahead passion passion I need you men to understand what's coming. This is what's coming. You understand? It's not if, it's not maybe. This right here is a fact. It's going to happen. That's why it says, you shall through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's not going to be for free. We all need to understand that thing. Okay? So we, why, we, why am I going over this? We need to prepare ourselves, brothers. We're not ready. We need to prepare ourselves spiritually, mentally for what's coming. Understand that thing. Okay. Now, um, now give me a Bible world. Go to page 148 now. Bible world. No, read Acts 22 verse 20 again. Regarding what our forefather Stephen did. Stephen was a martyr. He died for this truth. He died because he trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, go ahead. The book of Acts, chapter 22, verse 20. Read. And when the blood of the martyr Stephen was shed. When the blood of the martyr Stephen was shed, come on. I also was standing by, mm. consenting unto his death, and kept the raiment of them that slew him. You see that thing? Now give me the book now. The Bible world, page 148. Give me Acts 11, verse 9. 19 x 11 verse 19 and hold it you find it okay make sure that it shows properly so we can start to read it okay read that philip mm -hmm. the first christian missionary seems to have been philip not the philip who was among the original followers of jesus that's not the philip in john 14 here go ahead but a new convert mm. designated the evangelist he was called the evangelist read he had been chosen as a deacon to look after the war, the welfare of the members in Jerusalem. You see that? That's what we read in Acts 6. He was a deacon. Go ahead. But when they scattered. When they what? But when they scattered. In Acts 8 and 2. Come on. Following the stoning of Stephen. You see that thing right there? Read. The first Christian martyr. Mm, the what? The first Christian martyr. Go ahead. He also left the city. He traveled up into Samaria. No, no, stop right there. Acts 11 verse 19. He left the city. He went to Samaria. Okay. So he didn't say, because remember, the another thing you need to understand, brothers, is that Philip had great faith. That's what you need to understand. Because he saw Stephen being put to death. He didn't renounce his faith. He didn't say, I saw my brother be put to death to help with this. No, 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 no. He said, the mission is a goal. Now read what you got. The book of Acts, 
chapter 11, verse 19. Read. Now when they were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, mm. traveled as far as Phoenix, uh -huh. Cyprus, Read. and Antioch, mm. preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Unto the Jews only. So about the Stephen's persecution, this is where this is the these are the places they went to to preach the gospel. So this is letting you know they had great faith. They didn't stop. They didn't give up. They didn't say to hell with this. You understand? Their faith goes stronger and stronger. You understand? They believed in this. This is what this was not a game for them. That's what I need you men to understand. Okay? Now, go back to the article. Go back to the book. Okay, read that. He traveled what? He traveled up into Samaria, mm. where he preached, performed many miracles, and made numerous converts. You see that? So, you see what he was doing? He was still pushing the work. He didn't say, I'm stopping the work because my brother was put to death in a very gruesome manner. Read. Including the arch sorcerer, Simon the Great. The arch sorcerer. You cannot make. He was the chief demon. He was the chief Muloi during his time. Okay, go ahead. On another trip west of Jerusalem and to the coastal plain. Okay, before you get there, let's get let's get the account of X8. Give me X8 and 4. Where he met Simon the Ark Sorcerer. This is not Simon Peter. Okay. <laughs> X chapter 8, verse 4. Read that. The book of X chapter 8, verse 4. Watch this. Therefore. They that were scattered abroad mm -hmm. went everywhere preaching the word. Read. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. That's what we just read in the book. Go ahead. And preached Christ unto them. He preached Christ unto them. He taught the gospel of repentance. Read. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, mm. hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Read. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice, mm. came out of many that were possessed with them. Yo, go ahead. And many taken with palsies, and that were laid, were healed. Mm. And there was great joy in that city. Read. But there was Meaning a, in Samaria. Go ahead. But there was a certain man called Simon, uh -huh. which before time, in the same city used sorcery. You used sorcery in Samaria. Go ahead. And bewitch the people of Samaria. He bewitch the people of Samaria. Come on. Giving out that, that himself was some great one. He was some great one. Go ahead. To whom they all gave heed. From the least to the greatest. Say, this man is the great power of God. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And to him they had regard. Because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. You see that Simon was a witch. Go ahead. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God mm. and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. What verse you at? Verse 12, sir. Go ahead. Verse 18. Then Simon himself believed also. Mm. And when he the, was... so, the same sorcerer, he also believed at the preaching of Philip. Go ahead. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip mm. and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which which were done. All I want is verse 13. Is verse 13, is that it? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, give me Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Go back to the book now. Show the book now. He says, on another... On another tree, mm -hmm. west of Jerusalem, Read. into the coastal plain, once held by the ancient Philistines, mm. he encountered and baptized the Ethiopian eunuch. He, he, what? He baptized the Ethiopian eunuch. Read. Whom? Many believe to have been the first Gentile convert to Christianity. He was not a Gentile. He was not a Gentile convert. They say he was the, the Ethiopian eunuch. Why was the Ethiopian eunuch in Jerusalem? Give me that in Deuteronomy 16, 16. You see, we, if you're not reading the scriptures, you're not going to know what's really going on. You're just going to believe the garbage that the white men be printing out. Okay. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 16. This eunuch of, of Ethiopia, he, his job was what? He was looking after the treasury of the queen of Ethiopia. But he had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Why? Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 16. Come on. Three times in a year, 
shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God uh -huh. in the place which ye shall choose. Read. In the feast of unleavened bread. The feast of unleavened bread, that's the feast of the Passover. Come on. In the feast of weeks. In the feast of weeks, that's the feast of Pentecost. Read. And in the feast of tabernacles. In the feast of tabernacles. So three times a year, all the males were commanded to appear before the Lord. Three, that's, why they are, that's why Philip was over there in Jerusalem. Understand that. Okay, go back to the book now. He encountered and baptized the Ethiopian eunuch, mm -hmm. who many believed to have been the first Gentile convert. This was not a Gentile convert. He was an Israelite living in Ethiopia. He had come to Jerusalem for to worship because three times a year, the Israelite males were commanded to appear before the Lord. Read. To Christianity. Mm -hmm. He then carried his work to the city of Azotus. Uh -huh. And then. Where he teleported. He teleported from Azotus to back to Jerusalem. Go ahead. And then up the coast, as far as the city of Caesarea, mm -hmm. where he probably lived and worked for the remainder of his days. Stop. Acts 8 26 now. We're going to read to verse 31. The book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 26. Watch this. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, mm. saying, Arise, go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza. Read. Which is, which is desert. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia. A what? A man of Ethiopia. This is now an Ethiopian eunuch. Go ahead. An Israelite in Ethiopia. Read. An eunuch. Of great authority mm -hmm. under Candace, queen, Candace, of, Candace, queen of the what? Under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, mm. who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. You see that? So, this Ethiopian eunuch had come to Jerusalem for to worship. We just read in Deuteronomy 16 16. Go ahead. Was he returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet. Mm. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. What verse you in? Verse 29, sir. Go ahead. Verse 30. And Philip ran thither to him mm. and had him read the prophet Isaiah. Read. And said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Do you understand what you're reading? Come on. And he said, mm. How can I? Except some men should guide me. He understood that. Read. And he desired Philip. That he would come up and sit with him. Read verse 37 now. Watch this. Verse 37. Mm -hmm. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Oh, please. Go ahead. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch. Mm. And he baptized him. Go ahead. And when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. You see that? Because Philip teleported. Okay, go ahead. But Philip was found at Azotus. He was what? But Philip was found at Azotus. Beat me up. He just disappeared out of nowhere. Boof! He was in Azotus. Go ahead. Is that it on that? No, sir. Go ahead. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Till he came to Caesarea. Now, now go back to the Holy Land. Read page 87 now. 88. Yeah, page 88. That's what I want. Page 88. Yeah, that's it right there. There's something I missed. I want to include. I want to read. I want to go back there. <coughs> page 88. That's the one, right? Yeah, that's the one I want. That is right there. Page 88. Show that picture. Okay? Because we, are, we, are, we just read about our forefathers. Stop right there. Show the picture. Share it. Yeah, now remove me out. Move me out. I want the people to see that highlighted part. Yeah. Okay, share it. Yeah, I want the people to see the, 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 the yellow part. Yeah. Okay, read that. Read the yellow part. I want you to, while he's reading, I want you to look at the picture. Stephen, accused of blasphemy. Uh, Stephen, now, was accused of blasphemy. Go ahead. 
by the Jews of Jerusalem. By the Jews in Jerusalem before they were scattered abroad, Philip and them. Read. Is stoned to death. Is what? Is stoned to death. Look at the left. You see what they are doing? That's the, that's the people in Jerusalem stoning Stephen there. Look at him. He's being stoned to death. Go ahead. Outside the city walls in the ninth century. Mm. In and the what? In the ninth century. In the ninth century, Stephen was being be, was being stoned to death. That's what you're seeing right there. Go ahead. Byzantine manuscript illustration at the left. You see that at the left. That's what you're seeing right there. I just wanted to show you that. Okay. Now, give me Acts chapter 13 verse 9. Now, watch this. Acts 13 verse 9. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then Saul, who also is called Paul. Saul, who is also is called what? Then Saul, who also is called Paul. This is the apostle Paul. Now give me Acts, chapter 8, verse 3. Acts 8, verse 3. Watch this. The book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 3. Uh -huh. As for Saul. As for Saul, who is called Paul. Read. He made havoc of the church. He caused havoc in the churches. Go ahead. Entering into every house. He was entering into every house. Hailing men and women. And, and hailing men and women committed them to prison. You see what he was doing? This is what the Apostle Paul was doing. Hailing them to prison. What verse you in? Verse 3, sir. Go ahead. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad mm. went everywhere preaching the way. You see that? Because why? Because when, even when he was doing that, the, our forefathers did not stop teaching the word. This is before his conversion. Now give me Acts 9 and 1. The book of Acts chapter 9 verse 1. Read. And Saul, he had breathing out threatenings and slaughter. Meaning he was fuming. That's what it means. He was breathing out threatenings. He was fuming. Come on. And slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. And what? And slaughter. And slaughter. He was slaughtering them too. Read. Read. Against the disciples of the Lord mm -hmm. went unto the high priest. Go ahead. And desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues mm. that if he found any on, on his on this way, whether they were men or women, mm. he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. You see what he was doing? He didn't care whether men or women. Now don't take it personal, brothers. When we get attacked, men they want to put us to death. They be shooting while we're reading the scriptures. Right in front of our faces, they set us on fire. Guess what? Don't take it personal because the Apostle Paul was one of those. But later on, he converted. He became one of the, he became one of the mightiest apostles that the world has ever seen. Understand this. So don't take it personal. Give me Acts 26 verse 9. We're going to write, we're going to write 9 through 11. Read that. Acts 26 verse 9. The book of Acts chapter 26 verse 9. Read. I verily thought with myself mm -hmm. that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. That's what he was doing. Read. Which things I also did in Jerusalem. Mm. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison. You see that? Many of the saints, he said, I shut many of them into prisons. Read. Having received authority from the chief priest. And when they were put to death. Mm. When I they were what? And when they were put to death, when they were, when they died, when they when they were murdered, read, I gave my voice against them, mm. and I punished them oft in every synagogue, mm. and compelled them to blaspheme, mm. and being exceeding mad against them, he was he says being exceeding mad against them because he had the devil on him, read, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Meaning what? You think you're gonna be going somewhere else and teaching? They're going to say, no, those niggas are over there. They are teaching that Bible again. They're going to be coming for us. I hope you understand this. That's what's coming. Now, give me the Holy Land, page 87 now. Go back there. Because we read that now. Read page 88. We read page 87 already. The Holy Land, page 88. Oh, no. Did we read that part right? Oh, no, we didn't read that. Page 87. Okay, 88. That's what I want. 88, right there at the bottom. We didn't read that. Now I want you to share that thing right there. Okay, raise it up. Raise it up and blow it up so we can see that. Yeah, that part right. When it says the New Testament book of Acts. Okay. Yeah, read that. 
the New Testament book of Acts tells the story. Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed about him, mm. and he fell to the ground. Let's talk about the Apostle Paul. Come on. And heard a voice saying to him, mm. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? This is Christ speaking unto him now. Go ahead. And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom, whom you are persecuting. Read. Then the man who were traveling with him stood speechless. The men that were traveling with the apostle Paul, he says, they stood speechless. Come on. Hearing the voice, mm. but seeing no one. Now, this is the apostle Paul now. This is his conversion now. This is the beginning of his conversion. Go ahead. Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were open, he could see nothing. Mm. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. This vision, which Saul believed to be, the, to be supernatural, a miracle sent by God Read. marked a major step in the development of Christianity. The which is wrong. This does not mark the development of Christianity. This marked Paul being used as a vessel to go and teach northern kingdom who was stuck in gentle customs. Okay? Give me that in um, Acts chapter 9 verse 3 now. Acts 9 and 3. The book of Acts chapter 9 verse 3. Mm -hmm. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly they shined round about him a light from heaven. That's what we just read. Go ahead. And he fell to the earth mm. and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Read. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Mm. Who art thou, Lord? Go ahead. And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Mm. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. He says, you are kicking against the pricks. Go ahead. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord. You're going to read up to verse 6. Come on. What wilt thou have me to do? Mm. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city. And it shall be told thee what thou must do. He says, they in the, in, when you get into the city, they're going to tell you what you must do. Now jump down to verse, read verse 10. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Ananias, come on. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Read. Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, mm. and inquire in the house of Judah mm. for one called Saul. For one called Saul, which is Paul, come on. Of Tarsus, for behold, he prayed. Okay, now read verse 12. Read verse 13. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. Then Ananias answered, Then Ananias, Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of these men. And he says, I've heard of many by this man. Meaning what? His reputation is bad because he's going around killing the followers of Christ. Read. Mm -hmm. How much evil he has done to thy saints in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, mm. Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. You see that thing? He says, Go your way. He is a chosen vessel unto me. Go ahead. To bear my name before the Gentiles. Mm. To before the what? To bear my name before the Gentiles. The scattered Israelites, northern kingdom tribe. Read. And kings and the children of Israel. Is that what verse you are? Verse 15, sir. Okay, is that it on verse 15? Yes, okay, sir. that's it on that. Give me Acts 9, verse 20 now. The book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 20. Watch this. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues. Is it because now he's converted now? Go ahead. That he is the Son of God. He's not, remember, he is teaching like, listen, Christ is the Son of God. They're like, nigga, what? Because now they're looking at him like, you, not so long ago, you was going around persecuting the, the apostles. Now you're going to teach us that Christ is, <laughs> is Jesus that we might preach is the Christ. Go ahead. But all that heard him were amazed mm. and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this which called on this name in Jerusalem? Read. And came hither for that intent. Go ahead. That he might bring them bound unto the chief priest. You see that? Read. But Saul increased the more in strength. You mean he increased the more in strength? He didn't say, listen, I'm not he, he, I'm not gonna let you niggas you know discourage me from this. Yes, I was evil and wicked as hell. That's the same thing with us. We was evil. We were doing all men of evil in the world. Now the Lord calls you in. Your family members were like, are you not the one that was doing all evil last week? 
yeah, last year. Were you not the one? Now you're going to tell us about now. We must stop buying on the Sabbath. We must put on fringes. We must not be sleeping around. What you so? What you talking about? That's the same thing we're reading here. Understand that. Okay, go ahead. But Saul increased the more in strength. He increased the more in strength. Because many of our people, they still believe that we're going to stop doing this. We're not going to stop doing this. Read. And confounded the Jews mm. which dwelt at Damascus. What verse you at? Verse 22, sir. Finish verse 22. The book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 22. Read. But Saul increased the more in strength mm. and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, mm. proving that this is it, that this is very Christ. This is very Christ. He's teaching the Christ, the Messiah. Now watch this. Give me Acts now. Read verse 23. Watch this. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. The, whoa. The Jews did what? The Jews took counsel to kill him. They took counsel to put him to death. They're like, listen, you're not going to tell us nothing. That's the same thing today. Who are you? Listen, I know you. You grew up red before me. You're going to tell me that you know, I'm going to stop fornicating? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to start smoking weed? Who are you going to tell me that? You understand? Now they're going to start to plan for you, to plan evil against you. Give me that in, um, go back to Acts 9.16 now. The book of Acts chapter 9 verse 16. Read. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Stop right there. This is Christ speaking. He's telling Ananias what, what Paul has to go through for his name. Read it again, verse 16. The book of Acts chapter 9 verse 16. Be Remember, you brothers, I need you to understand what Christ is telling the apostle Paul is the same thing he's telling us. Read. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. You see that we have to suffer for the name of Christ. We're going to suffer. Verse 23. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. That's, the, that's, that's an example of suffering. Being put to death. Verse 29 now. Come on. Verse 29. Mm. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus mm. and disputed against the Christians. But they went about to slay him. You see that? They didn't stop. They said, we want to put you to death, nigga. Give me Acts 13 verse 45. Excuse my French, but it's the truth. Nigga is in the Bible, by the way. Nigga just means black. Acts 13 45. Now the people are disputing with him. Isn't the same thing that we've been experiencing since we've been at camp? Brothers, go ahead. Read. The book of Acts chapter 13 verse 45. Read. But when the Jews saw the multitude, mm. they were filled with envy. They were what? They were filled with envy. That's the, that's the driving factor behind them being what? Wanting to put you to death. Because of envy. Because they know that this is in the spirit they know this is what they're supposed to do. But they don't want to do it. But they want to stop you from doing it. Read. And speak against those things which were spoken by Paul. In, the people speak against us, brothers. If you're in this truth, you want people to like you, you're in the wrong place. Read. Contradicting and blaspheming. They were contradicting and blaspheming the things that the apostle Paul was teaching. Go ahead. Then Paul and Bar Barnabas. Is that verse 45? That's it on verse 45. Sir. Now read Acts 23 verse 10. The book of Acts chapter 23 verse 10. Read. And when there arose a great dissension, mm. the chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them. You see that? Don't, don't forget. He says, I must show you this, the great sufferings that you must go through for my name's sake. I'm paraphrasing it. Go ahead. Commanded the soldiers to mm. go down mm. and to take him by force from because among them. Because at this point, the apostle Paul, when he was among the camps, after he was done, he had, he had Pharisees, he had Sadducees who were divided. Who were, they were divided because when, when he taught, when he dis realized that, listen, these, these sects, they don't even agree with one another. I'm going to use that. So after he was done speaking, there was a division among them. There was a arguing among them. Read verse 10 again. The book of Acts chapter 23 verse 10. Read. And when there arose a great dissension, mm. the chief kept him. Fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them. Okay, this needs to be charged. Okay, go ahead. Commanded the soldiers to go, to go down and to take him by force from among them. Yes. And to bring him into the castle. Read. 
and the night following the Lord stood by him. It says the next night the Lord stood by him. Okay, because remember, they wanted to put the apostle Paul to death. Go ahead. And said, be of good cheer, mm. Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem. He says, be, he says oh, oh, for, as though thou, because you have testified of me in Jerusalem. Go ahead. So must thou bear witness also at Rome. Stop right there. He says he must also do what? So must what? So must thou bear witness also at Rome. He says you must bear witness also at Rome. Meaning the same way you testified of me in Jerusalem, you must also testify of me in Rome. What is he saying? He's telling him the stuff that he, the, the persecution that is going to befall him when he get to Rome. Keep reading. Now read verse 12. Come on. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together mm. and bound themselves under a curse. You see, now this is crazy. The Jews bound themselves under a curse. What did they say? Say that they would, they would neither eat nor what? drink. We're not going to eat. We're not going to drink. We're going to starve ourselves to death. Why? Till they had killed Paul. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy, man. This is crazy. He says, we're going to deprive ourselves of the basic needs of life until they kill the Apostle Paul. That's some evil stuff. Go ahead. And they were, and, and they were more than 40 which the, had made this conspiracy. 40 people had made this conspiracy. Go ahead. And they came to the chief priests and elders and said... Mm. We have bound ourselves under a great curse mm. that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. You cannot make this up. Now, give me Acts 24 and 1. Remember, this is the persecution that the Apostle Paul is going through. Being arrested, being falsely accused, being running from being put to death. Read. The book of Acts, chapter 24, verse 1. Read. And after five days, Ananias the high priest descended with the elders and with a certain orator named Tertullus. Tertullus, go ahead. Who informed the governor against Paul? Now, this guy is informing the governor against Paul. The governor here is Felix. Felix was a Roman. Now he's going to speak evil against, uh, against the apostle Paul to Felix. Read. And when he was called forth, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, mm, began to accuse the apostle Paul. Read. Seeing that by thee we enjoy great quietness. He says, because of you, governor, we are enjoying great quietness. Read. And that, ve and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence. He said, now he's buttering him. You see that thing? He is a bootlicker. Read. We accept it always mm. and in all places. More noble Felix with all thankfulness. You see that more noble Felix is buttering him now. Give me Acts 23 verse 24. The book of Acts, chapter 23, verse 24. Read. And provide them beasts that they may that they may set Paul on and bring him safe unto Felix the governor. Felix was the governor. Now go back to Acts 24. Read verse 4 now. The book of Acts, chapter 24, verse 4. Read. Notwithstanding mm -hmm. that, I, that I may be not further tedious unto thee, I pray thee that thou wouldest hear us of this clemency a few ways. Watch this. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow. Look at the accusation, man. We have found this man a pestilent fellow. Yes, Nyanis. Go ahead. And a mover of sedition. And a mover of sedition, meaning what? You're causing people to revolt. Read. Among all the Jews throughout the world. Through, whoa, throughout the world? Throughout the world. Wherever the people are watching us, they are learning this, they are changing their lives and say, we're going to the streets. Okay, is that it on there? No, sir. Go ahead. A ringleader. He, was, he says he's a ringleader too. Go ahead. Of the sect of the Nazarenes. The Nazarenes meaning what? The true followers of Christ. That's what he's really saying. So look at the accusations against the Apostle Paul. Let me show you what happened in Corinth. Give me 2 Corinthians 11.22. I need you to read quick. Second, Second book of Corinthians, Corinthians. 11 verse 22. Come on. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 11 verse 22. Read. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Mm -hmm. Are they Israelites? So am I. Read. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Go ahead. Are they, are they ministers of Christ? 
I speak as a fool. Is as because you know I speak as a fool. Go ahead. <laughs> I am more. I am more. Read. In labors more abundant. Is as in labors more abundant. Come on. In stripes above measure. You see that? Read. In prisons more frequent. Is they could not hand the candle to the apostle Paul. Read. In death uh, often. Is it in death often? Read. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. You see that thing? Is that you, you? You could not even. Let, you cannot come too close to what I'm doing. Read. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Mm. Once was I stoned. Mm -hmm, I know that thing. Go ahead. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. Read. A night and a day have I been in the deep. Read on. Meaning at sea, swimming. Read. In journeys often. Yeah. In perils of water. In perils of robbers, mm. in perils by my own countrymen. My my own countrymen, meaning wicked Negroes around you. Go ahead. In perils by the heathen. Mm. In perils in the city. Ray. In perils in the wilderness. In perils in the sea. In perils among false brethren. Among what? Among false brethren. That's the worst. Because this what we're going over. <coughs> that's what these these spirits are gonna pop out. Right now they are just hiding. But they are going to pop out when the time comes. Go ahead. In weariness and painfulness, mm. in watching often, mm. in hunger, in thirst, mm. in fastings often, Ray. in cold and in naked. You see that thing? That's it, one. That's verse 28, right? Verse 27. Go ahead. Besides those things that are without, mm. that which cometh upon me daily. The care of all the church. Listen, whatever trial you're going through, the mission is a goal. We still teach. You don't stop for nothing. You don't stop for nothing. That's what I'm trying to show you. Acts 25 verse 7. The book of Acts chapter 25 verse 7. Watch this. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about mm. and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul. You see that thing? Grievous complaints against him. Read. Really? Which they could not prove. They could not prove none of the things that they were accusing him of. They couldn't prove it. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, give me Acts 23 verse 11. The book of Acts chapter 23 verse 11. Watch this. And the night following, the Lord stood by him mm. and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as, as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also in, in Rome. He says, you must bear witness of my name also in Rome. Acts 28 verse 16. The book of Acts chapter 28 verse 15. Go ahead. And from 10. 1, 6, 1, 6 verse 16. Come on. Apologies, sir. The Read. book of Acts chapter 28 verse 16. Brothers, in the world you was doing the roof is on fire. My mission is a goal. Keep reading. And when you... The book of Acts chapter 28 verse 16. And when we came to Rome, uh -huh. the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. Watch this. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. Mm. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And, and when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people mm. or customs of our father. Because he was being accused over and over. You understand? Read. Yet was I delivered prisoners from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, would have let me go, because there was there was no cause of death in me. Because there was no there was no there was no thing that he did that was worthy of death. That's the point. But guess what? When the Romans released him, the Israelites said, "No, we found something else wrong with him." Read. But when the Jews spake against it, mm. I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar. You see that? That's why he appealed unto Caesar. Go ahead. Not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. Ray. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see you and to speak with you. Because that, for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. Ray. What verse are you in? Verse 21 now, sir. And they said unto him, What what chapter? 28, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And then what verse? Verse 20. Verse 20, right? Yes, sir. Okay, I need you to read verse 22. Oh, praise, sir. The book of Acts, chapter 28, verse 22. Mm -hmm. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. Mm. 
for as concerning the sect concerning this sect of the Nazarenes, right? We know that everywhere it is spoken against is or spoken evil against. Okay, what's going on with the connection here? I don't see nothing anymore. Okay, read that again. The book of Acts, chapter 28, verse 22. Read. But we desire to hear of thee mm. what thou thinkest. For as concerning the sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. Meaning wherever we go, brothers, what we teach is going to be spoken evil of. You must understand that. Okay, go ahead. Verse 23. And when they had appointed him a day, mm. they came many to him into his lodging, to whom expounded and testified <coughs> the kingdom of God, mm. persuading them concerning Jesus, mm. both out of the law of Moses. Because the apostle Paul taught out of the law of Moses, right? And out of the prophets. And out of the prophets. From morning till evening. That's what we're doing, brothers. Go ahead. And some believed the things which were spoken. And some believe not. Some believe more because of what envy. They hated the Apostle Paul and what he taught. The same thing the hatred they had for him is the same hatred they have for us. Understand that. Because the same way they looked at us that we're doing evil in the world is the same thing. Because you used to speak evil of the people going to church, even though they were going to see Caesar Borges. But now you're coming into this truth, you're learning the true gospel of Christ. Now you're going out there to speak evil of the church. <laughs> And we're not speaking evil of the church. We speak, we're, teaching, we're teaching against them because they're teaching against the Bible. Do you understand? It's not that we're speaking evil of the church. We're just correcting them because they are wrong. Okay? Give me 2 Timothy 4 verse 5. Watch this. 2nd book of Timothy, chapter 4 verse 5. Go ahead. But watch thou in all things. But watch thou in all things. Read. Endure afflictions. He says what? Endure afflictions. He says endure afflictions. Remember brothers, this is not Sunday school. Understand that. Read. Do the work of an evangelist. Like Philip. Read. Make full proof of thy ministry. Don't let no Negro come up in here and do evil. Shut him down. Read. For I am now ready to be offered. Stop right there. I'm ready to be what? For I am now ready to be offered. He says, I'm ready to die. That's what he's saying right there when he says, I'm ready to be offered. Go ahead. And the time of my departure is at hand. He says, my, the time of my death is at hand. That's what he's saying. Read. I have fought a good fight. Mm -hmm. I have finished my course. Read. I have kept the faith. Go ahead. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Read. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Mm. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love this love is appearing. Those that love is appearing, they're going to endure afflictions. That's what he's saying. Now give me the book, The Holy Land, page 102. The Holy Land, page 102. It's about to get hot. Page 102. I want you to go there. Okay. Page 102. Watch this. I need you to, I need you men to pay attention here. Okay. We are at war. I need to understand the stuff that's coming. In this truth, it's going to separate the men from the boys. We must prepare. Now read that for me. Okay. Now before you read that, give me um, Acts chapter 23. We have Acts 23 verse 11. The book of Acts chapter 23 verse 11. Go ahead. And the night following the Lord stood by him and said, mm. Be of good cheer, Paul, for as, as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, if, as you have testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. Now watch this. Let's see the witness at Rome now. Okay, blow that up big. Okay, blow it big. I want him to see it. I want the audience to see it. Okay. Now read that. <coughs> it was not until the spring of the year. Mm. AD 60. 60 AD. This is 60 AD. Go ahead. That Paul finally arrived at his destination. Which is what? Read on. In Rome. In what? In Rome. In Rome. Go ahead. While waiting for trial. While waiting for trial. Go ahead. 
Paul lived for two years under house arrest. Mm. He wore chains, but probably was still able to work at his trade of tent making. He was a tent maker. Go ahead. To support himself. To support, because that's how our forefathers lived. They had jobs. Read. Really? Although the apostle was not allowed to preach in public. He was not allowed to preach in public. Read. Really? He was still free to talk with his many visitors. Which is why he was able to write letters to them because he was under house arrest. Read. Really? And during this period, mm. he continued to make new converts. Mm. He was what? Converting the people to the faith. The people was repenting. Read. Really? That's it on that side. Okay, next next page, page 104. No, read the bottom part. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. A solemn but... A solemn but kindly looking Paul, mm -hmm. opposite, raises his, raises his hand, raises his hand in a traditional gesture of blessing. Mm -hmm. The Sicilian mosaic... Mosaic, mosaic dates from the 12th century. Dates from the 12th century. 1100. That's the next page. That's the Apostle Paul there on the next page. I want the people to see that. The picture of the Apostle Paul. Before you get this. Okay, that's the Apostle Paul right there. You see on the right? Okay, the people, not, they didn't want to hear anything that he had to say. Okay. Now, but I want you to read that. Look at the highlighted part. Go down now. Yep, that's the part we want. Blow it up big. I want the people to see that. That green highlighted part, that's the one we want right there. Okay, watch this. Pay close attention. Okay. Yep, read them. There is a tradition, however, that Paul was set free to resume his missionary journeys. Watch this. He may have returned to Asia, mm. to Asia Minor, or even have gone to Spain. Go ahead. At any rate, mm. he was in Rome in the year 64. He was in Rome in 6480. Pay close attention. Keep reading. That year, a fire broke out. That year, a fire broke out in Rome. Watch this. And destroyed almost a quarter of the city. Mm. Terrified at the great calamity. Meaning the fire was destroying everything. Go ahead, watch this. The Romans made offerings to all of the gods and to the spirit of the underworld. Now, the Romans, now this is Eromites. They are sacrificing to their idols for the fire to stop, right? Go ahead. Hoping to avert further disasters mm -hmm. from the refugees who were... The refugees is us now, Israelites. Go ahead. Who were trying to pick what was left of their few mega possessions mm. out of the ashes came a rumor that soon swept through the entire city and that's not that wasn't a rumor that was true right it was said that the emperor nero the emperor nero the emperor nero what did he do a cruel and probably insane man he was cruel and he was what he was insane go ahead that's it on that. next next page come on come on page 106 I want you to pay attention and listen here. Shade. Come on. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Read. Had started the fire himself. So, whoa. You see what Emperor Nero did? He started the fire. That's how crazy he was. He started the fire. Go ahead. To make room. To what? To make room. Watch this. For new palaces and temples. Mm. A report of the tale reached Nero. Watch this. To counter it, to counter it, to counter the quote unquote rumor. But he's the one that started the fire, by the way. Go ahead. He started another rumor mm. accusing Roman Romans Christians of responsibility for starting the fire. Stop right there. So who was he blaming for this? He blamed the apostles. He blamed it on the apostles. That the apostles were the ones that set Rome on fire. Keep reading though. After all, mm. he risen. After all, he risen. What did he say? He had been going about the streets preaching. He, he says, he says, he, we have been going about the streets teaching. We've been going to the street corners teaching, saying what? That Rome uh -huh. would burn someday. 
along with the rest of the world mm. when the Messiah returned to earth. You see that? You see that? That's exactly what they're going to do in these last days, brothers. Don't be sleeping. Do not sleep, brothers. Do not sleep. That's exactly what they're going to, what they're going to say this day. Because guess what we're preaching today? America is going to bend to the ground. In one hour shall thy judgment come. That's not something we're making up. That's written in the book. They're going to use that to do what? To torture us. That's what's coming. Read that part again. I want you men to understand where you're in. Okay. Come on. After all, mm. he risened. After all, he risened. They have been going about. They have been going about the streets. Don't think the white man is not watching, brothers. Don't think he's not taking videos. He's taking videos. Guess what? He's watching us. Read. Really? They had been going about the streets preaching mm. that Rome would bend someday along with the rest of the world. That's exactly what we say. That's what the Bible says. Read. When the Messiah returned to earth. When the, when the Lord returns. That's what we say. That's what the Bible says though. When the Lord returns, guess what? It says in one hour is thy judgment come. That's Babylon the Great. Keep reading. Nero had his soldiers arrest as many Christians as they could find. That's exactly what the white man is going to do in this country too. Go ahead. Then, Remember, look at, look at the, the, the national shutdown of Malema. Already Ramaphosa is saying, I'm going to deploy the troops and the military to deal with this. If there's anything going on. But DA went to march at Lutuli House ne? against the ANC. The troops and the police and the military was not deployed. So I'm showing you what's going to take place when they start to see us on the streets. Keep reading. The tortures inflicted on them were horrible. Now, now I want you to pay attention to this. First we get arrested. Next give this what happens to us. Keep reading. The tortures. The what? The tortures. The tortures. Inflicted on them were horrible. They says the, the torture that was inflicted upon us was horrible. Read. So horrible that the Romans, who were accustomed to seeing cruel punishment, cruel punishment of our forefathers, read, decided that the emperor really was mad. Meaning he went too far with his tortures. Keep reading. And that the Christians actually were innocent. You see that? Because we are innocent. Who did we kill? Nobody. Who do we hate? No one. Read. Some victims were burned alive. Whoa. I'm sure I need you men to pay close attention. He says victims were burned alive. A punishment Nero considered suitable for incendiaries. Incendiaries. Go ahead. For incendiaries. Uh -huh. Some were sewn into the skin of animals. He says some were sewn into the skin of animals. Meaning what? They took the animal skin and they sold it to you. For what purpose? Read. And attacked by dogs. So you can be attacked by dogs. These pit bulls that you see. Uh -huh. There's a purpose for them by the way. Keep reading. And others were ran over by the emperor in his own chariot. You see that? They were ran over by chariots. Today they're going to run over you by what? They're going to tie you to the ground. And have a military truck run over you. Keep reading. Still others were crucified. Others were what? Still others were crucified. Read. And some women were put to death by being tied. By, by being, being tied. tied to by being bulls, tied to what? By being tied to wild bulls that were then let loose in the arena. You see what they was doing? Our sisters. Read again. And some women were what? And some women were put to death mm. by being tied to wild bulls that were then let loose in the arena. Sure, sure. Listen, man. Keep reading. According to tradition, one of the victims was Paul. A second was Peter. You see that? The victims. So Nero killed Paul. Nero killed the apostle Peter. Read. Who had also reached the city some years earlier. Uh -huh. Paul was beheaded. Paul was what? Paul was beheaded. Paul was beheaded. Go ahead. In a field outside Rome. In the field outside Rome, read. Alongside the road that goes toward the sea. Stop right there. Now, this is the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, his head was chopped off. He was beheaded. Now, look at the picture in page 106 now. 
page 106. I want you to see what happened to the Apostle Paul. Okay? He was a martyr. He died for this truth. That's what we read in 2 Timothy says, I'm now I'm ready to be offered. That's what we just read. Okay? Read that. Show the picture. When Nero was beheading the Apostle Paul. Now, raise it up. I want the people to see the, the, the writing on the... No, no, I don't want that. I want the green part. Can you see that? Okay. Read it. The two great teachers of Jesus' way mm -hmm. died for their belief. They did what? Died for their belief. They were married. Read. Peter talked on the cross and Paul bottomed by the sword. Paul bottomed by the what? By the sword. Paul bottomed by the sword. But watch the next part of that. Read. Their martyrdom is shown. Their what? Their martyrdom. Their martyrdom. Their martyrdom. Go ahead. Is shown here in an illustration from a 10th century gradual. Uh -huh. A book of Psalms used in the mass. So, so what you are seeing there, show the people the apostle Paul being beheaded by Nero. So Nero killed Paul. You see that part right there? The apostle Paul is being put to death by Nero. I want you men to understand what's going on here. This is not Sunday school. This is some heavy stuff here. You understand? Now, give me Acts chapter 8 verse 14. The book of Acts chapter 8 verse 14. Read. Right. Now when the apostles which were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, mm -hmm. they sent unto them Peter and John. Mm -hmm. So Peter and John went to where when they were in Samaria. Okay, go ahead. Who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Mm. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now watch this. Give me page 148, Bible World Bible, Bible World, the book, page 148. Bible World, page 148. More effective were the efforts of the foremost among Jesus' early followers mm. and the leading light of the first church at Jerusalem. Read. The Apostle Peter. The Apostle Peter, come on. The first missionary went beyond the city and its environs took him north into Samaria. Into what? Into Samaria. That's what we just read in Acts chapter 8 verse 14. Come on. Accompanied by the Apostle John. That's what we just read in Acts 8 14. Read. Who had been, who had been so beloved by the master. That's talk about the Apostle John. Okay. Come on. Stay focused. I need the next page. They could, they just go up. I think it's the same page. You okay? The highlighted part. Yeah. That's it right there. Yep. Right there. Read that. Okay, come on, share it. Read. Preaching in many Samarit Samaritan communities. So the Apostle Peter was, was with John. Preaching in many Samaritan communities. Go ahead. They brought word of the Holy Spirit mm. and confirmed believers in Christ. Go ahead. It was probably during the following year that Peter... Presum presum presumably, presumably, along this time, mm -hmm. set out down the road toward Joppa. He went to where? To Joppa. Go ahead. Stopping in all the villages along the way mm -hmm. at Lida, west of Jerusalem. Right. He healed a case of palsy and converted many. At Joppa, he brought the disciple Tabitha or Dorcas back to life. You see that thing? Give me Acts chapter 9 verse 32 now. So the apostle Peter went to Lydda. He went to. He was going to Joppa, but he was passing through villages on the way. One of which was what Lydda. Okay, read that. The book of Job, the book of, the book of Acts, chapter nine, verse thirty-two. Watch this. And it came to pass mm. as Peter passed throughout all quarters. Read. He came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydda. Read. And there he found a certain man named Aina Aeneas. Mm which had kept his bed eight years mm. and was sick of the palsy For eight years, come on. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. 
Arise, make thy bed, and he arose immediately. Mm. And all that dwelt in Lega, Saro and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. You see that thing? Now read Acts 9.36 now. Verse 36. Verse 36. Mm -hmm. Now there was a Joppa, a certain disciple named Tabitha. Tabitha, come on. Which by interpretation is called Dorcas. Read. Really? This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, mm. which she did. Go ahead. And it came to pass in those days that, that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. Mm. And for as much as Lida was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Read. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, with all the widows, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Doc has made. Go ahead. While she was with them. Read. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. <coughs> and telling him and telling him to the body said, Tabitha, arrive. Mm. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she said, Ah. Meaning what? The apostle Peter brought <coughs> our foremother back to life. Go ahead. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. Do you see that thing? So the apostle Peter was doing great works. Now give me Acts 11 verse 1. The book of Acts chapter 11 verse 1. Before you get there, go back to the article. Go back to the book. Read here Peter experienced a what? Yeah, that part right there. After he, he, brought, he brought our foremother back to life. Here Peter experienced a most revealing vision. Mm. In it, God made clear that his kingdom was to know no boundaries. Uh -huh. and, and that the church of Christ was to be taken to the Gentiles as well as to the Jews. You see that? When it says the Gentiles talk about northern kingdom here, this is going into Cornelius. Okay? This right here is talking about Cornelius. Go ahead. Obeying this command, mm. Peter went to Caesarea where he, he baptized Cornelius, he re, the resident of Roman centurion. You see that the resident of Roman centurion, because he was a Roman centurion. Go ahead. Together with his whole family, thus officially recognizing these Gentiles as believers in Christ, mm. his, bold, his bold step seems to have created a great stir among the faithful at Jerusalem. Read. And it was evidently and it was evidently several years before this act, which had required Peter's abundant courage. Mm. Okay, raise it up so you can read the last part of that. Became approved practice. Okay, that's it on that. So this vision that he's talking about is talking about when the apostle Peter went to see Cornelius to let them know that, listen, northern kingdom now is being brought back into the fold. The Apostle Peter was used for that great mission. Because that was a great mission. It wasn't, it wasn't a small thing. Remember, Northern Kingdom had been cast out since when? The Apostle Peter had to be the one to actually teach the people, listen, Northern Kingdom is coming in. I'll short after that, that's when the Apostle Paul had on his mission to do what he was supposed to. Because the Apostle Peter had to come first and pave the way for the Apostle Paul. Understand that the apostle Peter was a great apostle. Don't get it twisted. That's why he was the head apostle. Give me that in. Um, okay, I'm not going to go over that. Give me the book of John, chapter 21, verse 15. Now, watch this. John 21, verse 15. The book of John, chapter 21, verse 15. Watch this. So when they had, when they had died. Jesus said to Simon Peter, mm. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Read. He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Mm. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. Go ahead. He said to him again the second time, mm. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Read. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Go ahead. He said unto him the third time, mm. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? 
Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time. Peter now is like, what's going on? Like now he's grieved. He doesn't understand. But I keep answering the question. What am I getting wrong here? Go ahead. Loveth thou me? And he said unto him, mm -hmm. Lord, thou knowest all things. He was worried. The apostle Peter was like, why is Christ asking me over and over about this thing? Read. Thou knowest that I love thee. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Meaning what? Listen. He is telling the apostle Peter, you've got a, a heavy responsibility upon you. It's not a small job. He's emphasizing it over and over. You've got a big job ahead of you, Peter. You better prepare yourself for that. Read. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, mm -hmm. when thou was young, when you was young, when you was still a child, go ahead, thou gettest thyself. Mm -hmm. Now you, you get it yourself, read. And walk as whither thou wouldest. Meaning you went wherever you went. Wherever you wanted to go, you went. You understand? Watch this. But when thou shalt be old. When, when you grow older, what's going to happen? Thou shalt stretch forth thine hands. Uh -huh. And another shall get thee. And another shall get thee. What is he telling him? Peter, you're going to die. That's what he's telling him right here. And he's going to tell him how. Keep going. And carry thee with that thou wouldest not. He's going to take you where you don't want to go. Read. This spake he. Signifying by what death he should he should glorify God. You see that thing? This is some heavy stuff right here. The Lord is telling the apostle Peter by a man the manner in which he's going to go out. Now I'm gonna show you really Christ. Man, Christ was on another level, man. Listen, we praying that the Lord give us the strength to be able to be on the level of our forefathers, man. Because what's coming, brothers, remember, this is the final captivity. There is no more captivity after this for Israel. Read. Come on. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. Mm. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. Whoa. After he says such a heavy, I mean, he just dropped a bomb on him. After that, he says, you follow me. Meaning what? Focus on the work. Don't focus on the manner in which you are going to go out. Although you know it, but don't focus on that. Now that's a heavy thing, man. That is a heavy thing. Give me that in 2 Peter 1 verse 12. Mm, mm, mm. Brothers, man. Woo. 2 Peter 1 verse 12. Read that. Second book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put to put to you always in remembrance. He says, I'm not going to be neglig negligent, you understand, to stop putting you always in remembrance. That's what's happening right now, brothers. You are being put in remembrance. Go ahead. Of these things, mm. though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Read. Yea, I think it meet. As long as I am in this tabernacle. Meaning in my body right now. While I'm still alive. Come on. To stay you up by putting you in remembrance. He says I'm going to stay your spirit up to put you in remembrance of the things that are coming. Read. Knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle. He says knowing shortly that I must put off this my tabernacle. Meaning I'm going to die. Go ahead. Even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Stop right there. Even as the what? Even as our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ has showed me. Has what? Has showed me. Has showed me. The apostle Peter knew by manner in which he was going to go out. He knew exactly the Lord showed him how he's going to go out. Can you imagine what it's like to live with that? Knowing exactly how you're going to go out? Listen, man. Keep reading. Moreover, I will endeavor. That he may be able, after my defeat, after my death, read, to have these things always in remembrance. And you must have these things always in remembrance. Because the same way the Lord is showing me, guess what? You're going to experience the something similar. That's what he's saying. Through, the, through showing us what the prophets before us went through, that's how we see how what we're going to go through. You understand that, brothers? Yes, now watch this. 
Go back to page 148 now. The same book. The same page that we was looking at, I want you to go back there. Yeah. Now I want you to scroll down now. Yep, that's it right there, right there. Okay. Now, I want you to read that. Now, read the link that I sent you. That's all the sample sent so, regarding mystical and mystic. Read that. Peter now seems to have... Remember, the Apostle Peter is not dead yet. Okay, he's not gone yet. Watch this. Peter now seems to have visited Corinth in distant Greece. Mm -hmm. And many have traveled widely in other lands. Okay, go ahead. Accompanied by his wife. Stop. Accompanied by his what? Accompanied by his wife. The apostle Peter is accompanied by his wife. Read. If he was not actually at Babylon. Stop. It's as if he was not actually at Babylon. Then he was at the mystic Babylon, which is wrong. Stop right there. Where was the apostle Peter? Read again, because I know some of you missed it. You missed this thing. Read again. If he was not actually at Babylon. If he was not actually at Babylon. Read. Then. Then, if he was not actually at Babylon. Was he actually at Babylon? He wasn't at Babylon. Read the thing again from the top. Peter now seems to have visited Corinth in distant Is that Peter seem to have visited Corinth in distant Greece, right? So it, basically the Apostle Peter is in Greece, right? Distant Greece, no, Greece, Rome. Remember, Greece, Rome. During the time of Rome, Rome had taken over the kingdom of the Greeks. It is now called the Greco-Roman Empire. Read again. Peter now seems to have visited Corinth in distant Greece. Mm. And many have traveled widely in other lands. So it says many have traveled widely in other lands. What are these other lands? Keep going. Accompanied by his wife. He was accompanied by his wife. The apostle Peter is traveling with his wife. Read. If he was not actually at Babylon. He says if he wasn't actually at Babylon. So where was he at? Read. Then he was at, at the mystic Babylon. He was at the what? Then he was at the mystic Babylon. Then the apostle Peter was, was at the mystic Babylon. What is the mystic Babylon? Which is wrong. Which is what? Which is wrong. Which is what? Which is wrong. The mystic Babylon is wrong. Now get the definition now. The mystic Babylon is wrong. Watch this. Get the definition now. I want you men to understand what's about to happen here. The Apostle Peter died at the mystic Babylon, which is wrong. Come on. Do we have it? Yep. The mystic Babylon, which is wrong. I want to see that. The definition of mystic. Come on. What's going on? Yeah, that's it, Muslim. Okay, let's share that. Do you see that story now? Yes, sir. Now read that. Synonym for mystic or mystical. Uh-huh. But why are we looking at this? Is there everybody looking at this? No, sir. Okay, read. Abstruse. Okay, this is the synonyms for mystic or mystical. Read. Anagogic. Mm. Archaic. Read. Kabbalistic. Mm. Cryptic. Enigma Enigmatical. Hidden. He what? Hidden. Hidden. What's the other one? Imagine it. More items. Come on. I want to see more items here. Yeah. Now start from the top. Go across. Abstruse. Abstruse. Imaginary. Imaginary. 
Mysterious. Means what? Mysterious. Means what? Mysterious. Means what? Mysterious. Means what? Mysterious. Go back to the book now. <laughs> Mystic means mysterious. Hmm. That's some heavy stuff right there I'm showing you. Pay close attention. Come on, get the book. Come on, brothers. Yeah, read that. Read that Peter now what? Peter now seems to have visited Corinth in distant Greece mm -hmm. and may have traveled widely in other lands. Go ahead. Accompanied by his wife. Mm. If he was not actually at Babylon, then he was at the mystic Babylon. He was at the what? Then he was at the mystic Babylon. Peter was at the mystic Babylon. Now, go back to the Bible world now. Page 148. Is that where we are? Yes, sir. No, no, no. There's another book. The one that we're reading earlier. The page we're reading earlier. Is that the one? Bible World, page 148. Hold on. No, no, no. I want the one where the Apostle Peter, the Apostle Paul was being beheaded. That's the Holy Land, page 106. Yeah, that's the one I want. Now, start with page one, 107 first. Let's see what happened to the Apostle Peter and his wife at the Mystic Babylon. Page 107, Holy Land. So. Yeah, share it. Come on. You yeah, want the part where you scroll up? You yeah, raise it up? Yeah, right there. According to tradition. Yeah, read that. Sorry, According to tradition, read. one of the victims of power. Mm. A second was Peter. A second was who? A second was Peter. A second was the Apostle Peter. Go ahead. Who had also reached the city some years earlier. He reached the city. Which city? Mystic Babylon. Go ahead. Paul was beheaded in a field outside Rome. Watch this. Alongside the road that, go, that goes toward the sea. Mm -hmm. Peter was crucified. Cru Peter was what? Peter was crucified upside down. At his own request. You see what? The apostle Peter was crucified upside down at his own request. Keep reading. Because he did not consider himself worthy of suffering the same death as Jesus. That's some heavy stuff right there, man. Brothers, that's some heavy stuff right there. He was crucified upside down at his own request. Because he says, I'm not worthy to be put to death like our Lord and Savior was put to death. Go ahead. On Vatican Hill. On what? On Vatican Hill. Mystic Babylon. Go ahead. Across the Timber River. Mm. From the center of Rome, the little community of Christians hid in cellars, in cellars of, or, or sought refuge in other cities. Mm. For safety's sake, some even denied their religion. Stop, stop, stop. Some did what? Some even denied their religion. Watch this. And claimed to be pagan. That's it right there. What you are seeing right there, that's exactly what's going to take place. Yeah, that's what it says, and shall betray one another. Right there. Because of what? 
the heat that's going to be on us. There's going to be so much heat that some will betray us and they're going to tell the people where we're at. That's what's going to happen here. I need you men to understand what's coming. This is a war. You understand? War is upon us. La La Land is over, brothers. There is no time to sleep no more. Them sleeping days are over. Okay. Now, go back to where was that? Now, show the picture of the Apostle Peter now. Page 106. Page 106. Let's see the, what we just read. The Apostle Peter being crucified upside down. And they don't show the wife there. But remember, he was traveling with his wife. And he was put to death at mystic Babylon, which is Rome. That's the Apostle Peter right there. You see that? Being crucified upside down by Nero. Look at that. Don't that there, there are no white men who can die for us. So that's the Apostle Peter right there. You understand? Being received as a burnt offering, as a sacrifice. Look at that. Man, mm -hmm. this is some heavy stuff, man. That's some heavy stuff right there. Go back to the book where it says Mystic Babylon. The part where it says Mystic Babylon. Let's go there. Mystic yeah, Mystic Babylon. Page 148, Bible World. That's the one. Come on, page 148. Yeah, that's the one right there. Raise it up. Yeah, raise it up. That part right there. Yep, yeah, that's the part right there. That's it right there. Read that. Come on. Peter now seems to have visited Corinth in distant Greece. Mm. And many and may have traveled wi wildly in other lands, accompanied by his wife. If he was not actually at Babylon, mm. then he was at the mystic Babylon, which is wrong. Stop. He was actually, he was what? He was at the mystic Babylon, which is wrong. Keep going. And it was, and it was there that he glorified God through a, a mother's death. You see that? He glorified God through a mother's death. That's how, listen, we want to glorify the Lord. You must be ready to do this. Now, Give me second Ezra 11 verse 39. Watch this. Now keep that on the screen right there. I don't want no confusion going back and forth. Second Ezra chapter 11 verse 39. Watch this. Pay close attention. Second book of Ezra chapter 11 verse 39. Go ahead. And, and not thou it that remaineth of the four beasts. Are you not the one? Are you not one that remaineth of the four beasts? Go ahead. Whom I made to reign in my world. Whom I made to rule in my world. Go ahead. That the end of their time. That the what? That the end of their time. Read. Might come through them. That the end of their rulership might come through them. What is Ezra talking about here? Second Ezra 6 verse 7 through 9. Read that. Watch this. That the end of their time on this earth might come through them. He's talking about the four beasts. The fourth beast. But the end of their time did not come through them during the time of Rome. So obviously, let's talk about something else. Read. Second book of Ezra, chapter 6, verse 7. Read. Then answered I and said, mm. What shall be the parting asunder of the times? What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Come on. Or when shall be the end of the first? What shall be the end of the first? Gender, the, the, at the end of the ruling empires of the earth? 
Read. At the beginning of it that followed. When is our kingdom coming? Come on. And he said unto me, mm. From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born, or were born of him, Jacob's hand held fast the heel of Esau. Watch this. For Esau is the end of the world. Esau is the end of the world. Come on. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. You see that thing? That the end of their times might come through them. Go back to Second Essence now. Chapter 11. Verse 49. Second book of Exodus, chapter 11, verse 40. Read. And the, and the fourth came mm. and overcame all the beasts that were past mm. and had power over the world. Or power over the what? And had power over the world. The ancient Rome did not have power over the whole earth. So it's not talking about Rome per se. It's talking about mystic Babylon, which is Rome. That's some heavy stuff in there. Go ahead. With great Fearful. With great fearfulness, read. And over the whole compass of the earth, mm. with much wicked oppression, read. And, and so long time dwells he upon the earth with deceit. Jump down to verse 45 now. Verse 45. Go ahead. And therefore, uh, and therefore appear no more, thou eagle. Appear no more, thou eagle. Go ahead. Nor thy horrible wings, mm. nor thy wicked feathers, read. No thy malicious hate. Go ahead. No thy hateful claws. Mm. No all thy vain body. Meaning the whole nation. They are all citizens. That's what he's talking about right there. Now, there's a page I want. Bible world. Okay. Yeah, Bible World, page 148. No, Bible World. Is that Bible World? No, that's not the one. Yeah, page 148. Sir. Let me see. Let me see. I don't think that's the one I want. Yes, sir. Is that one that holy land? Yeah, that's the one I want. Let me see. Yeah, page 124. That's the one. Yeah, that picture right there. I'm sorry you've taken the picture, brothers. Page 124. Do we have that picture? Yeah, we do. We have that picture. Show that. Yeah, Holy Land, page 124. It's right there, actually. Okay, you have it? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's show it to the people. The hmm? The yeah. Including the eagle. I want the people to see that eagle right there. Lower it a little bit. Lower it. Yeah. Okay. Because I want the people to see that eagle. That's it right there. Yep. Yeah. Read that. So, Naam, do you see it? Yes, sir. Read. The imperial eagle. The what? The imperial eagle. The imperial eagle of imperial Rome. Read. The symbol of Roman power. The what? The symbol of Roman power. The eagle is the symbol of Roman power. Go ahead. First carried on legion standard. Mm. Decorates the face of this first century BC onyx cameo. Cameo. Now... The eagle is the symbol of Rome. But here it says the end of their times might come through them. 
The end of the white man's empire did not come through during the time of Rome. It's going to come through now during the time of what? Give me Revelation 13 verse 3. The book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 3. Now go back to that mystic Babylon again on the article while we read this. Read that, Revelation 13 verse 3, come on. The book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 3. Go ahead. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Read. And his deadly wound was healed. He says he saw one of his head as it was wounded to death. That's when Rome fell in 193 AD. Go ahead. And all the world. No, no, no. Read that verse again. The book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 3. Go ahead. And I saw one of his head as it were wounded to death. That's when Rome fell in 193 AD. Come on. And his deadly wound was healed. That's when Rome came back during the time of the Renaissance in 1453. Go ahead. And all the world wandered after the beast. And all the world wandered after the what? After the beast. Read verse 12 now. Watch this. Verse 12. Go ahead. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. You see that? He says, this beast right here is exercising all the first power of the beast before him. The power of the first beast, that's Rome. Go ahead. And causes the earth. And them which dwell therein. The earth and del them which dwell therein. That's the same thing that Ezra just said. Read. To worship the first beast. To worship the first beast which is wrong. Go ahead. Whose deadly wound was healed. Whose deadly wound was healed because it was destroyed in 193 AD. They came back in 1453 during the Renaissance. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Now give me Revelation 17 verse 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 1. Go ahead. And they came one of the seven angels, mm. which had the seven vials, Ray. and talked with me, saying, mm. saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great hall. The judgment of the great hall. Go ahead. That seated upon many waters. They are in everybody's lands. Read. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. That's what we read in Revelation 18 earlier on, if you remember. Go ahead. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of their fornication. Ray. So he carried me away in the spirit, in the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. He says he saw this woman sitting upon the what? A scarlet colored beast. Colored beast. A red beast. Go ahead. Full of names of blasphemy. Full of names of blasphemy. Speaking evil against the Bible, against Christ, and against his people. Read. Having seven heads and ten horns. Seven heads and ten horns. Come on. And the woman was arrayed in purple mm. and scarlet color. Meaning glorious. Come on. And decked with gold and precious stones. Because they stole. They robbing the continent of Africa every single day. Keep reading. And pearls having a golden cup in her hand. Mm. Full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Read. And upon her forehead was a name written. Mm. Mystery. What? Mystery. What? Mystery. What? Mystery. Mystery. Mystic. Mm. Mystical. Keep going. Babylon the Great. You see that thing? So Rome is Babylon the Great. You see that? Where some bombs at? Read again. <laughs> Read verse 5, come on. <laughs> the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 5. Read. And upon her forehead was a name written. Upon her forehead was the name written. Mystery. Babylon the Great. Mystic. Babylon the Great, which is Rome. Read. The mother of Harlots. The mother of prostitutes. Go ahead. And abominations of the earth. And abominations of the earth. Now read the, uh, read the book again. You see, the authors know exactly what the hell is going on. You just have to sit in the book and read. Read that. Now, come on. Peter. So, where was the Apostle Peter beheaded? The Apostle Peter was beheaded in Rome, right? But he was beheaded, they call it mystic Babylon, which is Rome. So, the Apostle Peter is back and where is he at? Babylon the Great. Mm. Now read that. Peter now seems to have visited Corinth uh -huh. in distant Greece. Read. And many have traveled 
and may have traveled wildly in other lands. Go ahead. Accompanied by his wife. Mm. If he was not actually at Babylon, mm. then he was at the mystic Babylon. He was at the mystic Babylon. Go ahead. Which is Rome. Which is what? Which is Rome. Go back to Revelation 17 verse 5 again. The book of Rome, the book of Revelation chapter 17 verse 5. Watch this. And upon her forehead mm. was a name written, mm. Mystery. Babylon the Great. Mystery Babylon the Great. Go ahead. The mother of Harlots uh, and abominations of the earth. The, the, John the Revelator is letting you know that Rome is Mystery Babylon the Great. You understand? America is Mystery Babylon the Great, which is Rome. That's what John the Revelator is saying. That's what the scholars are saying. But watch the next verse. Go ahead. And I saw the woman mm. drunken with the blood of the saints. Stop right there. I saw the woman, mystic Babylon, which is Rome, mystery Babylon the Great, which is America. It's letting you know America is an extension of ancient Rome. Rome was never destroyed. Yes, it was destroyed, but Rome came back into power through America. Read. Really? And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Read that verse again, verse 6. Let's not butcher it. The book of Romans, chapter 17, verse 6. Not Romans, Revelations. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 6. Read. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints. This woman is drunk with the blood of our forefathers. The blood of the prophets. Read. And with the blood of the martyrs of, Je martyrs of Jesus. With the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. The Apostle Peter was one. The Apostle Paul was one. Stephen was one. Read. And when I saw him, I wondered with great admiration. Because John was like, who the hell is this woman? Now Revelation 18, the last verse. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 24. Go ahead. And in her was found the blood of the prophet. You see that in Babylon, mystic Babylon, the great which is the Rome was found the what? And in her was found the blood of prophets. In her was found the blood of the prophets. Come on. And of saints. And of saints. And of all that were slain upon the earth. The martyrs of Jesus. The martyrs of Christ. In Babylon the Great. And remember, Babylon the Great has powerful influence all over the earth. So it's not just talking about America, brothers. It's talking about where America has influence over, which is all the whole planet. And that's where Israel is scattered among all nations on earth. So wherever Israel is scattered, whether it's through China, through Saudi Arabia, through Iran, guess what? We are going to what? We are going to be beheaded, put to death. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Now give me Revelation 2 verse 9. The book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. Read. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, mm. but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews and are not. Go ahead. But are the synagogue of Satan. The synagogue of Satan. Come on. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. He says, fear none of those things which you're going to suffer. That's what Christ is saying. He says, we must not fear the things that we're going to suffer. Come on. Behold, mm. the devil shall cast some of you into prison. The devil is the synagogue of Satan in verse 9. Read. That ye may be tried. That you may be tried. Come on. And ye shall have tri tribulation ten days. Read. Be thou faithful unto death. Stop right there. Be what? Be thou faithful unto death. Be what? Be thou faithful unto death. Be thou faithful unto death. Wisdom of Solomon 3 verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 1. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, mm. and they shall no torment touch them. No torment is going to touch us. Go ahead. In the sight of the unwise, mm. they seem to die. He says, in the sight of the unwise, we seem to die. Go ahead. And their departure is taken for misery. Read. Watch this. And they are going from us to be utter, to be utter destruction. Because they don't understand death. Read. But they are in peace. We are in peace. He says, walking, everyone walking in their uprightness. Read. For though they be punished in the sight of men. Because that's what we're going to go through. Punishment. Go ahead. Yet is their hope 
full of immortality. We're going to live forever. Read. And having been a little chastised. Little chastised is what? He's going to tell you what the little chastisement is. Read. They shall be greatly rewarded. We are going to be greatly rewarded. Read. For God proved them uh -huh. and found them worthy for himself. Watch this. As gold in the furnace has he tried them Read. and received them as a burnt offering. That's a little chastisement. And receive them as a what? And receive them as a burnt offering. As a sacrifice. Like what you see what the apostle Peter did. The Lord says that's a little chastisement. You know why he's saying that? Because he's saying to us study to understand what it means to die. It's not what we've been taught what death actually actually is. That's what he's really saying. Okay. Give me Luke chapter 13, verse 34. No, 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 that's it. That's it on there. That is it on there. Watch this. Give me um, Acts 15, 25. Okay. The book of Acts chapter 15, verse 25. Read. It seemed good unto us, mm. being assembled with one accord. Because remember, brothers, we must be on one accord. There cannot be any one of us who's moving on the left yet. We must all be one spirit, one mind, one judgment. You can take the article of the screen now. Keep reading. To send chosen men unto you uh -huh. with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. Read. Men that have hazarded their lives. Men that have hazarded their lives. Meaning men that have put their lives on the line for this truth. Read. For the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see that thing right there? What verse you in? Verse 26. Is that it on there? Yes, sir. Second Corinthians 6 verse 3. I'm almost done. Come on. Second book of Corinthians chapter 6 verse 3. Read. Giving no offense in anything. We must not give offense in anything, but keep the commandments. Read. That the ministry be not blamed. That the ministry of Christ be not blamed for our evil behavior. Go ahead. But in all things, Approving, approving ourselves as the ministers of God. We must approve ourselves as the ministers of God. That means we must be upright. Read. In much patience, in affliction, mm. in necessity. In necessity meaning the things we need to survive. Go ahead. In distresses. In distresses that we're going to go through. Come on. In stripes. In stripes. In imprisonment. In imprisonment. In tumults. In tumults, meaning angry gathering of a mob trying to stone you. Read. In labors. In labors, meaning teaching the word, going out to teach the gospel. In watchings. In watchings, go ahead. In fastings. In fastings. By pureness. By pureness of heart. By knowledge. By knowledge of the Lord. By long suffering. By long suffering, being patient in this truth. By kindness. By kindness one to another. By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Christ, the understanding. By love and faith. By what? By love and faith. By what? By love and faith. By love and faith. Meaning what? Real love, not fake and phonies up in here. That's what he's saying. And with that, we say shalom. Oh, praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand for that thing. Oh, praise to the Most High. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay.